Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Hagoromo gives all chakra to Naruto in fairy tale. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Lord Storms and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. As Naruto and Sasuke watched Kagaya get sealed away into the planetary devastation they took that moment to relax as it was finally over. After all these years the threat that the shinobi world was going to end was finally over. I am proud of you three, you each have grown into strong shinobi. Kakashi said as he watched Kagaya continue to get sealed away. It wasn't no easy task, but I am glad you were able to help us Asuk. Naruto said with his signature smile towards his longtime friend and team member. Whatever. Sasuke responded in his usual nonchalant tone as he watched the seal finish up. As everything looked like it was going to be all well, the world Kagaya placed them and started to crumble. What is that? Sakura asked while trying to keep her balance. It seems Mother's Chakra world is on the path to destruction. I am opening the portal for you all to return. Came the voice of an elderly man. As if on cue a portal was created out of nowhere that led back to the battlefield. Team 7 made their way quickly to the exit but was stopped momentarily when Naruto suddenly yelled out in pain. Sasuke, Sakura, and Kakashi all looked on in wide eyes as they seen that Naruto's legs were impaled with a bone-like weapon that started to make his leg crumble away. Don't tell me that Sasuke was cut off abruptly as another bone-like dagger pierced his chest where his heart was. Time seemed to slow down as the sudden horror was upon them. Sakura couldn't even muster up words at what she just witnessed. Her two teammates and closet's friends were just attacked by a surprise attack out of nowhere. Kakashi looked up to see that Kagaya had her head and an arm outstretched pointed at the two who caused her this defeat. She shouldn't even been able to go back to her human form unless he trailed off as he watched Sakura try and go help her team. D2 think she was still a alive. Naruto stuttered out as he felt his body was starting to fail and crumble away. They were so close to being done with this war, but it seemed like Kagaya had other plans to take them with her. Naruto looked over to see that Sasuke was on the ground and near death. He just looked up into the sky as he slowly crumbled away. Be damn it I suppose this is the end. Sasuke said as he felt his body become more and more lifeless. Gee get out of here you two. Naruto shouted at Kakashi and Sakura. Both were broken out of their stupor and brought back to reality. Mr. Six Paths. Naruto and Sasuke are hurt and are crumbling away. Sakura yelled into the portal. Her vision was blurry as she watched Naruto and Sasuke crumble away to fate they didn't deserve. Bakashi watched the world starting to cave in and knew that there was no choice but to leave them. There was no saving them as there was no saving Abito earlier. He bit his lip and grabbed Sakura and dragged her through the portal right before it closed. Leaving Naruto and Sasuke to their end. Naruto watched as the portal closed and gave a small smile. At least he knew he saved the world from being destroyed. He looked over to see that Sasuke had already perished. He closed his eyes for the final time as he let himself succumb to darkness. His last memory was his parents' face before he drifted off into sleep. From the planetary devastation Kagaya watched as she was finally sealed. Ashura and Indra, you belong to me. You're my precious grandchildren. She said with tears falling from her eyes as she was sealed away permanently. Moments after, the world fell into its own destruction and there was no more. An unknown space. Naruto gasped as he sat up quickly. He felt like he was just in a nightmare. He looked around and saw that he was in an empty white space with nothing in sight. What a crazy dream, I almost thought I died there. He said to himself. You did die you idiot. We both did. Came a familiar voice that he knew all too well. Naruto turned to his left and seen that Sasuke was sitting there with his arms crossed like he had nothing else better to do. You're kidding right? So that was alleged thing Naruto screamed in panic. As much as I hate to say it wasn't real, it was. I can't even reincarnate your body back into your world because mother's chakra world was destroyed after she was sealed. The voice of the sage said as he appeared in front of the two heroes of the war. So I guess this really is it. I didn't even get to become Hokage. Naruto said as he started to tear up. I am sorry you two that this has happened. I wish that I could reverse it, but that is far beyond my range. However I can offer you two another option if you would like it. He said solemnly. What is it that you can offer us great sage? Sasuke demanded immediately as he looked at the old sage. Hey bastard have some respect will ya? This is the six paths we're talking to. Naruto retorted as he pushed Sasuke. It was a shocker to them both for Naruto to act like that, but maybe it was from how everything turned out. They were cut off by a laugh that came from Hagoromo. He hadn't had a chuckle like that in a while. You two definitely are like Indra and Ashura. Anyway what I offer is a chance at a new life in another world. You will have your same appearance and everything, you will just start over in a new world. Or you can move on into the afterlife and rest peacefully with your loved ones. 
both Naruto and Sasuke got interested when he said live peacefully with his loved ones. Naruto could be with his parents again, and Sasuke could be with his family and clan again. After a few moments of silence, Sasuke was the first to respond. I will take you up on your second offer. I have no reason to start over in a new world with no family or friends. Especially if I am going to retain everything I have now. He took a second before he decided to finish. I've lived my life and got the answers I wanted. I feel it's best that I try to relax in peace and just catch up with my family. Sasuke said with a small rare smile he hasn't had in a long time. Are you sure this is the decision you would like? Once this happens that's it. Hagoromo said as he waited with a response. I am positive. Sasuke quickly said as he turned to Naruto. He had a look of regret in his eyes that Naruto noticed immediately. H. Hey Naruto started but was cut off as Sasuke held his hand out. I know I was never known for this, but I want to apologize for all the pain I caused you and Sakura. I was just driven by hate and sorrow for myself that I let be the fuel to lead the life I had. Had I just listened to Kakashi Sensei, this probably never would have happened. Sasuke said as he paused. He felt tears for the first time actually threatening to fall. He couldn't believe he was being this lame in the face of death. After fighting as a team again I realized how much I missed out and I truly regret that. I hope you can forgive me old friend. He finished with a smile and open hand out towards Naruto. He had hoped Naruto would return the handshake. Naruto was at a loss of words for Sasuke's out of character apology. It took him a while, but he got back to his senses as he knew Sasuke was waiting on a response. Naruto firmly grabbed Sasuke's hand in a handshake and gave him the thumbs up with a smile. It's all forgiven old friend, as long as you are at peace I can say that I completed my promise and brought you back home kind of dot H he said with tears in his eyes as he knew that he didn't fully keep the promise of bringing him home. If only you could see this now Sakura. I believe I fulfilled my promise to you, just in a different way. He thought to himself. He let go of the handshake and Sasuke turned back to the six paths. I am ready now to go home. Sasuke said with a small smile. Hagoromo nodded towards him and held his staff out to poke Sasuke in the heart. He was enveloped in a blue light before his spirit was lifted off into the air. It's been fun Naruto. He said as he closed his eyes. Naruto watched with a grin as he watched Sasuke move on to the afterlife. Now it was his turn. Say old man sage, if I do so happen take up your offer can you tell me more about this world? He asked with a serious tone. Of course Naruto. I am offering you a new life in a world called Earthland. It's a world of wizards and magic. It is a truly magnificent world, however there is a darkness that clouds it. I offered this to you and Sasuke because you took finally brought peace to this world, something that took so many generations to happen. Hagoromo said with a sad smile. You were really that child of prophecy that was needed to unite this world once and for all. Even though the ending was something no one expected not even me from mother. You still accomplished that. I will be sure to pass that along to your friends that's being released from the infinite Tsukiyomi. He said. I see, well before I make my decision. Will I have to go to this world and learn magic and everything or can I go with everything I have learned? Naruto asked. He heard Sasu kind of mention something like that, but he had to make sure he heard it right. To be honest, if you accept my offer I will crack you a deal that you couldn't pass up. I will offer you my entire arsenal of prowess, with yours that you earned, and the nine biju. You will basically live your life as the six paths of that timeline. Is that something you think you could do? Hagoromo said with a with a hopeful look. He had hoped this would be enough. That's a crazy amount of power. Can I even handle all of that? Naruto asked with a wide open mouth. He thought he had a large arsenal of jutsu, but now that he thought of it, he just had multiple versions of the Rasen Shuriken and Rasengan. Along with his clones and Kurama's chakra mode. With enough practice you can. You will have a vast amount of power passed onto you. It is also easy to get corrupted by that power. However I've watched you your entire life and know you won't change into that. That is why I am willing to do this. The sage sage as he watched Naruto. He could tell the young teen was thinking. He knew of maybe one more thing that would maybe be able to win him over to go and be the savior of this world. I will also offer you the chance to see your parents before you go over there. He said loud enough for Naruto to hear him clearly. When the blonde teen froze, he knew that sealed the deal. If I can just see those two one more time I am willing to do it. Naruto said with a shaky voice. Hagoromo smiled as he closed his eyes to bring Kashina's and Minato's spirit into their realm for a brief moment. Naruto watched two blue lights form in front of him, and before he knew it they were there. His wonderful parents. The two that loved him more than anything. The very ones that gave their life for him. Oh my god Kashina slowly said as she started to tear up. If Naruto was here that meant that he passed on. Minato was in shock because he just learned the news of Naruto's death. Hey mom Naruto didn't even get to finish as he was engulfed by Kashina in a bear crushing hug. 
she was shaking and sobbing loudly. Naruto tried not to cry and returned the hug as well. I know you weren't expecting to see me so soon Ahaya. However it's okay though. I am fine and I am happy. I requested to see you guys, by the old man sage. Naruto said as he looked finally got free of Kashina's hug and rubbed the back of his head sheepishly. What do you mean by old man sage Naruto? Kashina asked. Her question was answered when Minato pointed at the sage of six paths who was floating not too far from them. It is an honor great sage. Minato said with a bow. Even though he was just out in the physical world being explained of Naruto's and Sasuke's death and sacrifice. It was crazy that he was brought here almost instantly. No need to be formal with me. Naruto wanted this time to be with you before he took my offer. The sage said with a smile. Offer? The both asked as Naruto gave a big smile. The big reason I wanted you two here was because I wanted to let you know that I was sad that I didn't get to become Hokage and finish my dream. However after talking to the sage, he offered me a new ambition and that is to bring peace to this new world. He said with a bit of enthusiasm. I mean I had a rough life and everything, but I worked hard to earn that strength to protect others. If I can do this in another world and maybe even pass on my knowledge and hardships onto someone. Maybe that changed the future of this world too. He said with a grin. That is great my dear. I support you for whatever you want to do or be. That is my role as a mother to love and support you. All I ask is for you to be safe and actually live your life out to the fullest and find a lover that you can start a family with and bring me grandkids. She said while shouting out that last part with a bit of excitement and sadness. I promise to do that for you mom. Also for your other prohibitions, I followed the money one really well. Watching pervy sage burn his money on booze and women gave me a negative influence. So I just saved and didn't really care to drink. As for women, I haven't found one yet. I will find one beautiful and kind just like you though. I promise. He said with a saddened expression. He didn't want to mention all the years he could have returned it had he not been dense. Naruto was brought out of his thoughts as he heard a sniffle. He looked up to see Kashina had a wide smile on her face with tears rolling down her face. I am so glad my love and words got through to you when you were born and after our first meeting you know. She said as she kept crying. Naruto walked up and embraced her. Which she gladly returned. Minato just smiled as he watched everything unfold. He didn't really know what to say as he wasn't a big talker. He knew he had to say something and give something to pass on to his son. Hey Naruto, I know I didn't explain to you the things you need to know when we met the first time, and I regret it. I do however want to say I am proud for all that you have accomplished and achieved. I know it's not much, but if you're going to be going to this next world I want to pass on my jutsus and knowledge of and jutsu to you. He said with a smile. He then looked towards the sage and wanted to see if that was possible. When he nodded he sighed in relief. Ashina perked up to that as well and decided that she was going to pass on her Yuzumaki knowledge to him. If that is your final request then I will let you present you have these final moments before we move on to this. I have to put everyone else at ease and clean up the divine tree. The sage said as he looked at the family. They all nodded and Minato was the first to reveal a scroll that had a small seal on it. This has everything that I learned about Fuinjutsu from Jureya Sensei and Kashina's clan. Along with my flying thunder god technique. It will take some time to master it, but I wouldn't even be surprised if you master it quicker than you did with the Rasengan. He said with a smile as he handed him the scroll. Kashina was up next and gave him a kiss to the forehead. Little did he know she transferred her chakra chains to him. I transferred the chains that I used to help restrain Kurama. I know you won't need them since I hear you two are friends now, but I want to make sure you have them for protection. I wasn't the best at ninjutsu or whatever like your dad, but the seals you see in those scrolls are originally from our clan and a few are my own original. She with a proud smile. Thank you so much. I love you so very much as well and I wish I could spend time with you over in the afterlife, but I don't think it's time for me yet. Not when I know I can have another chance to help others. Naruto said with a sad smile. So much was happening for him and he was so close to saying screw it and going with them to the afterlife, but he knew it wasn't his time yet. He knew they would still be with him as he lived his new life. Ashina and Minato stepped back as they gave one final wave to Naruto. Both smiled as they mouthed an I love you to him and their spirits went back to the afterlife. Naruto was truly satisfied after that and knew there was nothing that can take that from him. He looked towards the six paths with a serious look and smiled. I am ready when you are old man sage. Agaromo smiled and nodded as he held his staff out towards Naruto's chest. You will live on from this day forward as Naruto Uzumaki, the sage of six paths. You will have access to my prowess, both my Dejutsu's Rinnegan and Sharingan. You will be able to activate both at will. You will have the nine Bijuu travel with you as they are safer with you in this world than they are here in our world. You have your full abilities you have learned through your life including your sage mode from Mount Mayaboku. 
however you won't be able to summon the toads as there isn't a portal in this world that connects it to Mount Mayaboku since it's connected to this world. You also have whatever your parents passed on to you. Hagoromo explained as he ran through everything he offered and what was being passed on. Is there anything else you need or would like to pass on to your friends back on earth? The sage asked as he looked at Naruto. Naruto sat there for a second and thought before he smiled. Just let them know that Naruto Uzumaki will always be with them in their hearts believe it. He said with a thumbs up. Agoromo smiled as he nodded his head to the boy's final request. I got it, I will tell them all. Farewell Naruto and take care and save this world as you did ours. I am counting on you. He said as he pressed his staff finally into Naruto's chest. He was enveloped in a white light before he disappeared. Agoromo sat there for a second as he watched where Naruto was once was. It's the end of an era. He said with a smile as he prepared to finish up what needed to be taken care of in the shinobi world. Somewhere in the kingdom of Fiori. Naruto had awakened with a headache as he was brought back to the land of the living. He stood up and stretched and realized that he was perfectly normal like the old man said. He looked down at his outfit and seen that he was in his normal ninja gear, except it was all black and that he was in a jacket like his sage jacket. Only this time it was orange with black flames. He rubbed his forehead and wondered if he had horns like the old man sage did and smiled when he didn't. He did feel his forehead protector though and smiled at that. He patted himself down and noticed that he had a couple things in his pocket. He pulled out the scroll his dad had given him and smiled. He was glad that traveled with him. He placed it in his back ninja pouch. He pulled out the other thing from his pocket and almost cried. It was a picture of him and his parents back in the realm they were at, but with a background of a sunset. It shows both of them hugging him from one side. It showed him and Minato grinning while Kishina gave him a peck on the cheek. He smiled up too to the sky and thanked the old sage for that. He placed the picture in his back pocket for safekeeping. He then knew he had one more thing left. He closed his eyes and then shouted as loud as he could in his subconscious. Yo Kurama. Shut the hell up kid. We're trying to recover from traveling here with you. Yelled a voice that caught Naruto off guard. He was expecting Kurama, but instead it sounded like. Don't mind Shukaku Naruto, we all hear you. We need to recover our energy, so don't be too dependent on us already. You should be fine though since you have Pop's power and chakra. Came the voice of Jayukiaka the Eight Tails. Ah okay then, just wanted to make sure everything was fine. You guys rest up. We can all talk later. I need to find out where exactly I am at in this earthland and then figure out where to go from there. Naruto said as he opened eyes to have them replaced with the famed Sharingan. Now I see why the Ichiha were so envied. This is awesome, I can practically see everything. Naruto said as he then let his eyes transform into the next stage which was the Manjekyo. His was a black iris with a red five-point star. He blinked his eyes and they were their normal blue again. After calming down from his excitement he looked out towards the distance and seen a giant town. What drew his attention was the giant building near the center that looked like a castle and had a giant logo on it. It was some type of crest. Maybe I can get my answers there. Naruto thought as he took off towards that building. Part of him wished he would have just retired peacefully to his parents. However that didn't compare to how excited he was to be blessed with given another chance again to be the savior of the world without dying this time. Nordo arrived into the town in a short while after he took off from his spot. He was taking in all the sights around him and noticed that the peacefulness of this place reminded him of Kanoha a little bit. However he knew that wasn't the case since apparently this world had a darkness that needed help to overcome. Now that I think about it, I sure was a little crazy to accept this without question. I guess it's good I grew up alone so not knowing anyone is going to find for a bit. Naruto thought to himself as he landed on a rooftop. He looked around to see the everyday folk walk around minding their own business. They seemed happy and content, which made him smile. He looked back to his original target and noticed that it wasn't that far away from him. Looking at the building he could tell it looked like a castle kind of in a way. He also noticed the giant flag or banner that had that crest he seen from the distance back in the woods. It looked like a bird perched on a branch or something. Maybe it's like a group or faction like us of the Hidden Leaf. Naruto thought out loud as he took off again towards the building. His only concern was to hope they were friendly. At the Fairy Tale Guild Hall. It was just an average morning like always at the Guild Hall. Jobs haven't come in so everyone was just having a boring day until Master Makarov had returned from the council. Cheer up Natsu, we'll be able to go on a mission soon enough. Came the voice of a young blonde girl. She was currently trying to cheer up a salmon-haired boy that looked like he was having the worst time of his life. No use Lucy, Flammabrain here won't really budge until master come back with the jobs. Said said a black-haired guy that was sitting in a chair leaned back. What was that Gray? I've been waiting for a reason to kick your ass. The boy named Natsu yelled as he stood up abruptly as his fist were set ablaze with fire. Oh really now let's just see you try. 
Grey yelled back as he got out of his chair and got ready to brawl with Natsu. It is unmanly to talk trash to each other this early in the morning. You are ruining the set a much bigger dark-skinned white-haired man that was cut off as Natsu sent his fist right into the guy's face. No one asked for your opinion Elfman. Natsu screamed as he sent Elfman flying into Grey with that punch. You fucking bastard. Grey said as he threw the big man that was called Elfman into a table of guys that were minding their own business. Soon after that somehow the entire guild hall was a massive brawl. Lucy just looked at the men's side as she made her way to the bar to talk to one of her role models. It was a beautiful mage that was the barmaid. She had long flowing white hair and eyes that were more blue than the ocean. She wore a dark red dress and had her bangs of her hair put up into a ponytail. The woman smiled as Lucy came and sat at the bar. Good morning Lucy. She said sweetly. Good morning Mira. Lucy replied with a smile before she sighed. If only we could go one day without a morning brawl. She said as she watched the chaos. It's okay you know it's best to get it out before Urza and Master comes. Speaking of which, Urza should be walking in right about now. Mira said with a smile as the guild hall door burst open. Everyone pretty much froze as they felt the presence of a large amount of killing intent. Standing in the doorway was a beautiful reteated woman that had a glare that was pretty much piercing the souls of everyone in the guild. She looked around until she found the two that started the whole mess. Before I tear into everyone, I will give you two the option to apologize and fix it before I do. The girl said in an awfully terrifying low voice. We're sorry Urza. Natsu and Grey cried immediately as they ran to bow in front of her. They would rather not get cursed out and beaten by this woman early in the morning. Everyone knew when she said when she would fix something it was never the best method. The woman named Urza smiled that she didn't have to start off by handling the immatureness of her rowdy guildmates. She saw made her way happily over to the bar where Marahan and their newest person Lucy was at. Good morning you two, I hope you all slept well. You recover well from the mission from yesterday Lucy. She said with a grin as she looked at the young celestial mage. They had taken a quest about an ancient artifact called Lullaby. They had to defeat this one mage that was carrying it. Everything was going well until the artifact which was a flute turned into a demon and Natsu, Grey, and Urza destroyed it. However they destroyed the guild meeting hall for the council. Long story short a completed mission, but no pay. I'm doing well Urza. I assume you are doing well too. Lucy asked with a smile. She was still a little terrified of the woman seeing how strong she was and how much control she had to scare people like Natsu and Grey. Yeah I'm okay. Sucks that we didn't get the reward money, there is an armor I'm trying to get completed that will make good for this battle style I am working on. Urza said. Oh that's pretty neat. Lucy said as she watched Mira bring her a slice of cake. A little early to be eating that, but she won't tell Urza that. Then all of a sudden a thought came to her mind. I know I have been here for about a month or so, but I was curious as to how often do we get new members. Lucy asked. Well it depends if Master Team they are worthy to join. Not everyone can join us, but we always have people requesting. Mira said with a smile. Makarov only let people join that he sees has the potential to better themselves. As he always said everyone who joined always had some type of tragedy that held back that potential. He wanted them to be with others who also suffered and came together to overcome that tragedy and blossom. Lucy nodded her head in understanding and was about to go and bother Levy for a bit until the guild doors opened. Everyone looked and was expecting the master to be back with the jobs. However it was someone completely different. Standing at the door was a young spiky-haired blonde man around her age. He had bright blue eyes that nearly rivaled Mira's. He was wearing an all-black outfit and a trench coat-like jacket that was orange with black flames at the end. He had a black headband around his forehead that had a strange logo on it that Lucy never seen before. What was the most defining feature that everyone noticed was the whisker marks on his cheek. Warahin was the first to make her way over to him and see if he was lost. She highly doubted it since everyone pretty much knew where the fairy tale guild was located. Hello welcome to the fairy tale guild hall. May I help you? She asked politely with a smile. Naruto was at a loss of words. He had followed that red-haired chick and seen she was heading to this place. He was shocked at how big the place was. He decided to try his luck here since he didn't really have anywhere else to go. The only problem was the fact that the white-haired beauty made him choke up on his words. Biwahayaha. I was kind of lost and I was kind of wondering if you could tell me where I was at. He stuttered out nervously. He had never thought he would find a girl that was dead drop gorgeous. Mira smiled at the young blushing boy. You are at the fairy tale guild hall in the town of Magnolia. Does that help you enough? She said. Are you lost or something? Well not really, I was kinda just traveling around and noticed this town and this large building. It had stuck out to me to see if anyone here could help me. Naruto replied back while scratching his head. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. He said as he held out his hand politely. Miru gladly returned it and smiled back. 
I'm Arahan, would you like to come sit down and have a bite to eat? Maybe we can help you find what you're looking for. Nice to meet ya. I am quite hungry to be honest. He said with a smile as he felt his stomach growl. Mira smiled and motioned for him to follow her. He's freaking hot. The whisker marks make him look so exotic. Lucy thought to herself with a blush as she watched a blonde come over to the bar her and Urza was occupying. Naruto sat down and noticed the two women that took a glance over at him. He smiled to them and decided to greet them. Hello, nice to meet ya. Urza nodded in response, and Lucy gave a friendly smile. Nice to meet you Naruto. My name is Lucy. Where are you traveling from may I ask? It's kind of hard to explain. I don't think you would believe me if I told you haha. Naruto said with a laugh. Urza grew suspicious and decided to listen. Most travelers wouldn't have a problem telling where they are from if they came to a place lost. However this guy came to a notorious guild all nonchalantly. She felt like he was hiding something. And be that unbelievable. I'm sure it can't be too far away could it? Lucy asked again. Oh it's pretty far alright ahaha. Nordo said with another laugh. He was trying not to explain his origins yet until he knew he was safe to do so. Why are you trying to skip around the question? Are you like a road mage or something? Urza said finally having enough of his avoidance. A mage? No I can't wield magic. Well that's what I think at least. Naruto said bluntly. You do realize this is a wizard guild right? It's hard to believe a common traveler would accidentally walk into a guild and not know it. Urza said a little harsh. This woman is being too observant. Reminds me kind of a female Shikamaru kind of. Naruto thought as he was locked into a stare down with Urza. Just wait a bit before you spill the beans. There's no evil intention here, she's just finding your story unbelievable. Came the voice of Kurama. Oh hey buddy. It's good to know you're okay. Naruto yelled in his head. However Shukaku chipped in. Why are you so obnoxious? His voice boomed. Shut up Shukaku. Just play it cool Naruto, I feel at peace from these people. Matatabi said kindly. Okay sounds good. Naruto thought back. He closed the mental link out and noticed that he was staring back at the red head who had a confused look. Is there a problem? Do I have something on my face? Urza asked a little loud while unintentionally drawing some attention. She also hoped there wasn't cake or anything on her face. That would be embarrassing. Naruto looked confused and noted that he must have stared off into space as he talked to his Biju companions. No none at all. I just drift off sometimes. Naruto lied a little as he raised his hands up innocently. Urza you have cake on your face. Mira said with a giggle, much to the horror of Urza. Anyway you aren't hiding anything from us that you can't tell us where you're from? Urza asked as she looked back to Naruto again. Naruto's eyes were wide as he looked around to see a lot more people were watching now. He seen a salmon-haired boy and a black-haired guy walk up to them as well. He saw a blonde-haired guy on a balcony on the next floor looking down at him staring him down. What is going on here Urza? Came the voice of Grey as he and Natsu approached them. Nothing Grey. I'm just asking our newcomer some questions. Urza replied. If you were a member I would beat the answer out of you. Urza jokingly said said. Naruto sweat dropped at the threat and instantly thought of Sakura. Naruto this is Natsu and Grey. They are some of our promising mages. Urza said with a smile while pointing out the two. They were interrupted when a little old man came inside the guild finally. I am here brats with today's work. Please don't destroy anything that can cause me to have a heart attack. The old man said. Good morning master. Before you post the jobs we have a traveler here that needs some assistance. Marahin said when she greeted Makarov. She then pointed over towards Naruto. Makarov nodded and walked with her over to the young blonde. Well I can definitely tell you aren't from around here. Would you like to speak with me about joining our guild? Makarov said with an raised eyebrow. Naruto was confused by that statement but decided to go along with it. I'm sure, but I'd rather talk about what I need to talk about in private. Naruto said trying to figure if that was a good idea or not. Just entertain it for now Naruto. Kurama said in his mind. Okay Naruto replied. Makarov had nodded and motioned for him to follow him. He made a look at the blonde on top of the stairs. The man got the message and made his way down. Urza just stayed quiet and followed. She would get her answers soon enough. Mira knew that when Makarov had a private meeting with a foreign person or someone who came to join all the S-class wizards would be there too. Wish I could see what they were going to talk about. Natsu complained as he went back to his table to sleep. Now knowing that it was going to be longer before a job would be posted. Shut it Flammabrain. Nothing we can do when there is someone coming to join and seek counsel with Master. Maybe he has some cool magic that will be much more useful than your fire. Gray said with a taunt. Natsu took the bait and was in his face in an instant. Care to say that again I speak. Natsu said with a growl. Lucy sighed as she watched the two fight again. Mira was right when she said they go at it every time Urza isn't looking. 
in Makarov's office. Makarov sat down in a chair behind his desk. Urza, Mira, and Laxa stood off to the side with Laxus being the closets, as he was the quickest to retaliate if this guy were to try something. So first and foremost. What is your name and where do you come from boy? Makarov said getting straight to business. Naruto smiled as he knew exactly how he was going to try and handle this. He pointed his thumb at his forehead protector and gave the most prideful response he's given in his life. I am Naruto Uzumaki, the new sage of six paths sent to this world. I am from the village hidden in the leaves. Would you care to say that again? Makarov asked to make sure he actually heard that right. Naruto looked at him with a confused look before he looked to the others. They also had a look that clearly screamed he was crazy. He sighed before he repeated what he just said. My name is Naruto Uzumaki and I am a sage sent to this world. Naruto repeated slowly and clearly so they could understand. Smooth kid, now you are going to have to explain to them how you got here. What I recommend is telling them only things that matter. Don't spill the entire story to them as they won't understand. Plus you barely know them. Kurama said. I guess you're right. What about my chakran not being able to wield magic or whatever it is here that old man sage talked about? Naruto asked as he was waiting for Makarov to think of his next set of words. Let me ask the others on what they think and I will get back to you. Kurama said as he broke the link. Great, that was exactly what he needed right now. Guess he could do what he did best. Which is adapted to whatever was thrown to him. Well it's nice to meet you Naruto. That is definitely a foreign name around these parts. Makarov said trying to start a friendly conversation. However that other part didn't make sense to him. I can tell you're bothered by when I said that I am from another world. Am I right? Naruto asked as he knew this was going to be the hardest part to convince them. When he got the nod of confirmation from them all he sighed. So as I said earlier to Miss Urza and Marahin. My story is hard to believe and honestly I am still trying to believe it myself. Naruto said. Before I ask you to continue do you want them in here or not? I brought them in because they are my top mages. Makarov asked. He didn't want him to feel uncomfortable in front of his strongest mages. Naruto smiled and shook his head. I don't mind them. However if we can properly introduce ourselves that would be nice you know. Naruto said. Makarov nodded and motioned for Laxus to go first. Laxus rolled his eyes as he leaned against the wall. After he was comfortable he started to speak. I'm Laxus and I am the strongest S-class mage here. That's all you need to know about me. He said smugly. Naruto raised an eyebrow at that and mentally noted that he was going to be an annoyance later. He turned to Urza as she straightened herself up and started to speak in a professional manner. My name is Urza Scarlet and I am also S-class mage here. I serve to protect my master and my friends with my power. She said proudly as if she were a knight. Marahin cleared her throat and gave a polite smile. My name is Marahin Strauss and I am also S-class mage. I work at the bar and take care of my sibyl my younger brother. She said while also almost stuttering that last part out. Naruto noticed that and figured it was something she didn't like to talk about. Naruto nodded and looked back towards the elderly man behind the desk. My name is Makarov Dreyer and I am the guild master of this guild. We are called Fairy Tail if you didn't already know that. Makarov said. Fairy Tail huh? Seems kind of ironic for a magical world I suppose. Naruto said with a light-hearted snicker. Makarov raised an eyebrow at that before he decided to ask his next question. What do you mean sent to this world? Makarov asked. This was probably the one thing that has been bugging them all and he wanted to get the cleared now. Naruto sighed as he knew this was coming. He thought back to Kurama's words of only telling them the important things. First off like I said, I am from another world by a decision I chose from the sage who was considered a god to us. I come from a world of shinobi. We had a ton of conflicts in our world and we just got out of a world war basically. I was killed unfortunately after I saved the world from a corrupt person. I had the choice to either live in the afterlife or try a new life in another world while also taking the sage we considered god powers. He wanted me to help this world avoid a fate that he saw coming in the near future. Naruto said in the best summary he could give trying to make it sound believable. That is quite ridiculous to believe that you don't wield magic, but Chakra. You may have to prove that to make me believe you. Laxa said with a sneer. He had thought it was going to be interesting. Boy he was wrong. Laxus be respectful. I am sorry for whatever happened to you, however your story is quite hard to believe. Is there a way you can somehow prove this? Makarov said while rubbing his temple. He wanted to believe the kid because in his long life he had seen things that shouldn't have been possible. It's okay. I knew this was going to happen ahaha. I just wanted to try and find a place to start in this world. I have nowhere to go unfortunately, that is why I came here to see if I could get guidance. Naruto said sadly as he felt the regret of not going to the afterlife resurface. I believe him master, I feel we should at least try and give him a chance. 
Besides he hasn't done no harm to us. Mira said with a smile. She didn't know this guy, but she could tell that he had some pain with him. Almost anyone that walks through that door always do. I would have to agree with Mira Master. I say we offer him a chance here to become acquainted with this world and we can go from there. Plus we can always use more members. Urza said with a smile towards Naruto which he gladly returned. Makarov looked over at the two women and seen that they were determined to help him. He sighed and nodded. He turned to Naruto as he thought about his next words. I don't doubt you have not experienced something that has hurt you, and if what you say is true, I would gladly accept you to become a member of us. I know it is sudden, but if you refuse I won't be angry with you or anything. You can stay here if you have nowhere to sleep until tomorrow. However if you aren't a member tomorrow I can't house you after that. This guild isn't meant to house refugees, and that is an honest statement. Makarov said seriously. He hates that he has to be like that, but he had to be honest with the kid. Naruto nodded at Makarov's offer. He knew it would probably take him a little while longer to find someone else to listen to him. What do you guys think? Just say screw it and just play it out. Naruto asked in his subconscious to the Biju. When he realized that they must have been in a deep conversation for the lack of reply he sighed. If it means I am in good hands I will gladly join and offer my powers to you. Naruto said with a smile. He knew it would be a rough start but he needed some type of foundation. Makarov beamed brightly at his answer. Mira gave him a smile and a wink and Urza walked up to Naruto and held her hand out for a handshake. Naruto took the handshake and that's when Urza spoke up. Welcome to fairy tale Naruto. She said as she let go and took her leave. Laxus decided he heard enough and walked out. This mysterious guy was a weakling just like the others. He was pissed the old man fell for his little sob story. Mira pulled out a stamp that was shaped like the crest of fairy tale. She smiled as she approached him. Congrats on joining, what color and where would you like your stamp? She asked. Naruto thought about it for a second and chose orange. He rolled up his sleeve to expose his right forearm. She pressed it against him and once she was done the fairy tale logo was there. Well that is pretty cool. Thanks Mira. He said with a smile. Mira returned the gesture and took her leave to go place the jobs on the job board. Is there anything else you have questions on um Master Makarov? Naruto asked. He decided he'll add the master to his name since he seen the others call him that. If you feel like you want to open up and tell me more of your past or history I am always willing to listen. Every member of this guild that's joined has came here with a heartbreaking tragedy that changed them. So you aren't the only one or alone Naruto boy. Makarov said sincerely. Naruto facial features became soft and nodded in understanding. As he got ready to take his leave Naruto stopped at the door. Thank you for giving me a shot, you just don't know how much easier you've made this new life for me. When I am ready, I will tell you everything master. Naruto said as he left. Makarov just sat there and stared at the door. First master, there is something about that child that I can't put my finger on. Maybe you can figure it out and share that with me. I do feel like though this place is going to get a lot more livelier and destructive. He thought with a sigh as he prayed that Naruto wasn't as destructive like the others. Back in the guild hall. Naruto found his way back to the main guild hall after he had his talk with Makarov. It went much better than he had expected and was glad he got his foot somewhere. Since he was now a part of this guild he was looking forward to becoming friends with the people he worked with. At least I know I am not alone. Everyone has had a painful event happen in their life huh? Naruto thought as he looked to see people were crowded around a board. What's going on over there? Naruto asked a couple guys that was sitting at a table. It's the job board. Master comes in every day to list new jobs. I assume your meeting is over with him. One man spoke up as he took a puff of his cigarette. Oh yeah. We had a good talk and I was offered a chance to start new here as a member of the guild. Naruto said with a smile. Oh that is great news. Welcome to fairy tale. My name is Wakaba. The man replied as he held his hand out. Naruto took it with a smile. Naruto. I'm Mikao and the little lad over there with the dark hair is my son Romeo. Mikao said with a grin. He also shook Naruto's hand as well. Try not to be as rowdy as the others. Sometimes I wonder how Master even puts up with all of them. He said with a laugh. Wakaba joined in as well as they went back to their card game. Naruto made his way over to the job board to get a good look at it. He could see all types of jobs and their rewards of jewels. He assumed that was their currency in this world. He saw a decent one offering about 100,000 jewels and was about to grab it until he heard a loud shout from the second floor. How could you lax us? You could have easily stopped him from taking that quest. Came a familiar voice that Naruto heard. He looked up to see that Mira was standing in front of Laxus with a red face of anger. Like I knew he was grabbing an S-class quest. I assumed he was about to job off the balcony and attack someone like he always does. Laxus replied with a smug grin. In truth he knew exactly what Natsu did, but he could care less. 
If the little fool wanted to do an S-class quest he could do one then. That's not the point. It's the fact that the one he took is highly dangerous and he could get killed. Mira screamed as she gave him a glare that he hasn't seen her do in a long time. Oh I forgot what that mirror looks like. You should go back to the demon phase again Laxa said with a laugh. What is going on here? Makarov asked as he made his way upstairs to investigate the argument. Natsu took an S-class quest from the board and left with Lucy Master. Mira said while looking back at Laxus with a glare. Laxus could have stopped him but let him escape with it. Makarov sighed as he rubbed the bridge between his nose at the headache that was coming upon him. I see. Well no point in getting angry now as we have to go hunt those two down. Urza. I need you to go retrieve Natsu. Makarov said as he took a seat on the balcony to find the redeed. Will do master, which quest did he take and where is he headed? Urza asked as she stood up to get ready to depart. It is the Galuna Island quest. Mira replied in a grim voice. Makarov sighed at that and Laxa snickered which earned him another glare from Mira. Okay I will make haste to go retrieve those two now. Now if you would excuse me Urza was cut off from a voice that was near the board. Is it alright if I tag along for learning purposes? Naruto asked. He wanted to see what all he could do now but also show that he can be helpful to these people. I am sorry but this is an S-class mission that only S-class mage could handle. Also if you don't have any magical ability there's not much you can do to help. Urza said in a strict tone. I can handle myself no problem. Plus I've got some abilities that will be most useful. Naruto replied back firmly. Last thing he needed was to be underestimated. Urza was about to retort again until Makarov spoke up. I would deny you Naruto, but I haven't seen what you can do. Urza let him tag along and evaluate his skill and that will let us know where he will stand. Makarov said. He had a feeling that this kid was more than he expected. Something just screamed to him to let him do this. Hopefully he doesn't regret it and put his life in danger. That was probably his biggest fear and that is to put one of his own at risk. Are you sure master? I get what you're saying, but he is new. Urza tried to reason. She didn't want to put him at risk for something that could be avoided now. I promise you that I will be perfectly fine Urza. I'm willing to bet your quest portion as well. Naruto said with a smirk. He knew they had to get to know him, but he needed to prove that he wasn't a dead weight. Fine. Let's go, however if you slow me down there will be repercussions with the two we are retrieving. She said threateningly. Naruto gulped as he had a feeling he knew what that meant. She screams a granny tsunade promise of pain. He thought to himself. She's very capable Naruto from what I can tell. Also we need to talk when you get the chance about your chakra. We've discovered something that's quite interesting. Kurama said to the blonde in his mind. Okay we will talk as soon as we get the chance to relax. Naruto replied. He focused back on Urza when he saw she was getting ready to walk out the door. He ran to catch up and follow. Once they were gone everything went back to normal in the guild. Makarov gave Laxus a little verbal lashing that he completely ignored. Mira went back to her duties at the bar. Everyone else either went on jobs or lounged around the guild waiting for everyone to return. But Natsu and Lucy. I can't believe I am going through with this. Even though the pay is nice I am terrified of what Master will do when we get back. Lucy said while starting to panic. I think it'll be worse when Urza finds out. Happy said fearfully. Natsu just groaned as he tried not to throw up on the boat. It's nothing we can do now but try and finish what was started. We already have committed with this. Gray said as he looked at the pitiful form of Natsu. He was going to bring them back to the guild until he let himself fall into Natsu trap of taunts. Yeah you're right Gray. I guess we can just try and see this out. Can't be that bad can it? Lucy asked. Well the island is haunted if you didn't know that said the fisherman who was driving the boat. He offered them a ride after seeing none of the other fishermen wanted to. Right now I regret this. Lucy said while starting to panic again. Last thing she wanted to hear was that she was on a S-class mission on a haunted island. As they sailed through the water a thick fog started to appear. Which put them all on edge. We're getting close if the fog appears. The fisherman who name was Bobo said. He looked around until he started to see the water become unsteady. I am getting a bad feeling about this guys. Happy said as he looked to see Natsu was still out for the count. Gray nodded in agreement as he watched the water start to get wavy. Lucy seen a giant shadow that was approaching them in the fog. What is Lucy was cut off when Bobo shouted. Incoming wave. A massive tidal wave came crashing into them before they could even fully process what was going on. With Urza and Naruto. Naruto and Urza arrived to the train station in a rushed fashion and got on it to make it to Harjan town. They sat across from each other as they felt the train start to depart. As they waited Urza decided to make some conversation to get to know her new guildmate. So what does the symbol mean on your headband? She asked curiously. Naruto's eyes widened when he realized he'd forgotten to take it off. He quickly undid it and started to fold it. 
it's a memory of my old home that I came from. I guess I shouldn't really wear it since I am technically not a part of it no more. He said a little sadly. Urza gave a sorrowful look at his response. If what he said was true about where he was from then she could only imagine what it could be like to be in a new world all alone starting fresh. Trying not to let the mood be sour, Naruto decided to ask her a question. What kind of magic can you do? Naruto asked. Urza perked up at that and smiled. She started to tell him of her requip magic that Naruto thought was pretty cool. Kind of like Tenten in a way. He thought as he listened to her. Naruto I think it is a good time to tell you of your chakra. Kurama said bringing the boy into his mindscape. He looked around to see that he was with all the biju. It's good to see you guys all well. Naruto said with a grin. He received various nods and grunts from them all. Anyway Naruto as Kurama said there is something we found that is quite interesting. Your chakra that what you were supposed to come here with isn't a thing anymore. Instead it was converted into this natural energy called Ethernano, it's like the natural energy for everything here. It's in the air and all living beings. So basically it's the foundation, and then it is magic that the wizards here use. Jayuki said. So does that mean my power is limited? I'm not really understanding it. Naruto said confusingly. It means that you're all your vast chakra from us and pops is now this raw energy that is Ethernano. It's like a more potent and more powerful version of magic. Son Goku said trying to clarify it better for Naruto. Remember how you gather natural energy to enter sage mode? Matatabi asked. When he nodded she continued. Sort of like that, this Ethernano is natural and is much more powerful than magic. You can still use all your abilities, we are just saying that your reserves are now compassed of this Ethernano, including us. So any ability you use now will be compassed of this magical component. We assume the old man did this to try and make sure you wouldn't be affected in this world. Even though you would have nearly had unlimited chakra it would have ran low eventually. I definitely didn't know if your chakra could have recharged from this. It's hard to tell or even understand. Kurama said. I see, this is hard to take in and understand for sure. Maybe Urza could explain this Ethernana thing to me. Naruto said. She will probably say the same thing. However this is what we came up with and thought what was the only clear answer. However your chakra is definitely not a thing anymore as well as our chakra too. Kurama said with a sigh. Well sounds good. When this quest is up, I say we go try what I know and see what we can do and can't do. Plus I need to figure out all the abilities I have gained from the old man. Naruto said as he cut the link to return to reality. Luckily for him Urza was talking to a waiter that was offering them something to drink. So she didn't notice he was drifted off into his consciousness and not listening to her. Naruto decided to pull out a kunai to play with while he waited for her. After she ordered them a couple drinks, she looked back towards Naruto who was fumbling with a three-pronged knife that had some type of writing on it. What a unique looking weapon. May I hold it? She asked politely. Naruto looked up at her and smiled. Sure. He said as he offered her the kunai. It was one of my dad's weapons and he passed it on to me. I see. I'm not really into short knives, but I'm sure it's very effective. She said with a smile as she handed it back. If only you could have seen him use it. You would think so much differently. One day I hope to be able to use it like he did. Naruto said with a grin as he felt his eyes started to water. He blinked them away so Urza couldn't see them. He didn't want to dwell on the past and knew he needed to move forward with his new life. So there is something that I am confused about. I know I said I wasn't capable of being a mage since I don't have magic, but I do remember talking to an old lady that said I looked like I was surrounded by this stuff called Ethernano. Naruto said trying to make up a lie to hide that he talked to Kurama. Ethernano huh? Was she like a fortune teller or something? I mean Ethernano is the magic particles that compose magic. It's in everything and it can make your natural magic way stronger if you have a lot. She replied. If he had Ethernano then he was technically a mage right? She never heard of something like this. I guess. Well maybe Master Makarov would know. Like I said, that is what she told me and it was confusing. He said. Yeah I suppose, we can figure that out later. Right now our first objective is to get Natsu and Lucy back. Honestly when I get my hands on Natsu he is going to be in for a lot of pain. Especially for dragging Lucy into it. She growled as she clenched her fist. Naruto sweat dropped as he looked out the window. He prayed that this Natsu guy was ready for the wraith of this woman. He knew firsthand from experience that an angry woman is not something you want to be on the receiving end for. Lucy groggily opened her eyes after feeling a cold breeze wash over her body. She shivered as she sat up and rubbed her arms to warm herself up. I don't know if that was a spell or a natural wave. She said out loud as she looked around to see she was on a beach. The boat was a couple meters away from her and it was obviously destroyed. She seen Natsu rubbing his head while Happy tried to wring his tail dry. Gray was a tad bit further away waking up. She got up and made her way over to her teammates. 
She also noticed the fisherman was nowhere to be found. Are you guys okay? She asked as she walked up. Yeah I'm doing okay. That was quite a wave. Gray said as he stood up. Yeah me and Happy are fine. That wave came out of nowhere though. Natsu said as he shook any leftover sand out of his head. I honestly don't know if that was a magic attack or a natural disaster. Lucy said as she took in their surroundings. The island looked gloomy with how the moon illuminated it. This place gives me the creeps. They can't be too bad. If any spooky guys want to come out, I'll knock him for a loop. Natsu shouted as he punched his palm. That's besides the point ashtray. We need to find our client and get to work if we want to finish this job. Gray said as he started to walk off into the woods. Natsu soon followed after with Happy and Lucy. I get a bad feeling of this place Lucy Happy whispered to Lucy as he flew next to her. There was something off about this place and he couldn't figure out why. But Naruto and Urza. The team of Urza and Naruto had arrived in Harjan Town where Urza knew Natsu and Lucy had departed from. She was currently trying to find a boat that was offering services to give a ride to Galuna Island. Unfortunately for her, no one was willing to help. Narjuo sighed when he heard Urza get denied again from another fisherman. Could the island be that bad that no one really wants to go there? Naruto thought to himself. He was brought out of his thoughts when he heard a loud groan of annoyance from Urza. I don't understand why all these people are being so uncooperative. She said as she tried to think of a plan. They could easily just take a boat by force, but she wasn't like that. What kind of place is Galuna Island? Naruto asked while he looked at the island across the water. It's a cursed island that's haunted apparently by an old demon. The demon apparently is powerful enough to make it an S-class quest. There's been rumors of S-class mages who have gone to do the quest only to never return. However that is all rumors from others. I don't know what is there. Urza said as she walked up next to the blonde. Naruto gave a small hum as he continued to look at the island. Maybe I can run across the water. He thought to himself. That would be a great idea, but you don't know how the climate will affect the water heading towards that way. Especially if this place is haunted. Karama replied back to the blonde. You're right. Naruto said back thinking of that outcome. HMA. I remember Fu was able to fly. Was that from your chakra? Naruto asked with a bit of excitement. You're correct Naruto. However though, Fu actually trained with that power. Not saying you can't do it, but you have to learn my power as well as the others to take full advantage. Karama is your best bet right now. Especially since you two have already been together for a long time. Came the voice of the seven-tailed Biju. Naruto gave a defeated sigh before Karama gave out a grunt of annoyance. You could always try your six paths in Jutsu. It gave you the ability to fly remember. Unless you forgot that you are literally the sage himself already. Karama said as he laid down and closed his eyes. Naruto's eyes widened when he heard Karama's suggestion. Why didn't I think of that earlier? Naruto shouted. His random outburst startled Urza a bit and gained them a few looks from civilians that were nearby. Think of what earlier? Urza asked. Realizing that he said that out loud, Naruto gave her a cheeky grin. I have a way for us to get across the water no problem. I just need a minute or two. He said. Urza raised an eyebrow as she watched a blonde sit down cross-legged and close his eyes. Is he planning to meditate at a time like this? Urza thought as she watched the blonde. She was going to question him before she seen a yellow flicker. Next thing she knew he was covered in yellow flames. Urza felt an explosive wave of warm magic that sent shivers down her spine. Naruto's eyes had opened and they were replaced with orange eyes. At first his pupils reminded her of Antodes' eyes, but they had slits as well. Which made it look like a cross. His whisker marks were solid black now, and his attire was black and yellow. His hair seemed a bit wilder as well. The biggest thing that caught her attention was the nine black orbs that were floating behind him. Urza was at a loss of words for the power he was displaying. His magic was overwhelming. She had remembered that he told her that he wasn't a mage or whatever, but his body screamed of raw magic power. Unless this is Ethernano. She asked in a low whisper. Naruto was now fully standing and looking at Urza. I guess you could say that. Like I said, that lady said I was full of this Ethernano or whatever it was called. It's good to know I can still do this easily. Naruto said as he made a fist. He felt amazing as he let himself relax to the familiar power. He was able to gather his six paths chakra mode more quicker than he was back in his world. Karama was right about this Ethernano. That's all he felt in the air when he pulled in the natural energy. I know I was right kid. It seems as though this is a better source of power than chakra. You pretty much can draw this in as much as you want. I am sure there is a limit for you somewhere. We just have to discover it. Karama said. He was now sitting up since Naruto decided to use his power. Awesome. Since I can use this mode. I should also be able to he trailed off as he started to levitate off the ground. Urza's eyes widened when Naruto began floating. 
She was brought out of her stupor when Naruto started talking to her. Do you have any armors that can help you fly? Or do you need a ride? Naruto asked with a smile. I have a couple armors that grant me the ability to fly. Unfortunately it is for a short distance. I wouldn't make it far across the water. Urza said truthfully. She never took the time to invest in a full flight armor. I see, well come on. I should be able to get us across no problem. Naruto said as he held his hand out. Urza just looked at his hand for a second before she took it. Next thing she knew, she was on another Naruto's back. Her eyes were wide with seeing two Naruto's. This had to be an illusion spell right. However the second Naruto felt solid as if she was with the real one. Naruto let out a hearty laugh as he saw his redeeded teammate look at him with confusion. I can tell you have a lot of questions. I will answer them once the mission is over. You hit the nail on the coffin. After this mission, be prepared with a lot of questioning. Urza replied sternly as they started to fly across the water. Some of the civilians looked shocked and some had a look of stupor. Overall though they assumed it was just a mage being a mage. There is more to this guy than meets the eye. I know now that I was wrong to underestimate him. He made it seem like he had no possibility of being a mage. However he is radiating with magic even if it is Ethernano just who are you really Naruto. She thought. Her eyebrow then twitched in annoyance as she realized that they were probably duped by him. She would get her answers later. That was for damn sure. Back with Team Natsu. Natsu and Ko had made it a village gate shortly after traversing through the woods for a short while. They were stopped by a couple bodyguards that was guarding the gate. What is your business here outsiders? Asked one of the gate guards. We are mages from Fairy Tail. We are responding to you guys' request of the Galuna Island S-Class mission. Gray said stepping up to the guard. He showed his guild mark to show his affiliation. Lucy, Natsu and Happy did as well. Very well follow me. I will take you to our leader. The man said as he motioned for them to follow him into the village. As they walked through the village, Lucy looked around and took notice that the villagers looked depressed. Every single person she seen had on robes as well. Maybe it's a religious thing. She questioned in her mind. After walking a good distance they seemed to reach the middle of the village and was approached by an elderly man. May I ask who are these strangers Malco? Asked the elderly man. These are some mages that are here for the posted quest we sent out. The guard named Malco said with a bow to the elder. The man rubbed his chin as he looked them over. Ah that is wonderful news. May I ask where you young ones are from? He asked with a smile. We are from Fairy Tale. My name is Grey Fullbuster. Accompanying me is my teammates Lucy, Natsu and Happy. Gray said pointed out each one of his companions. I think I've heard of you before. Anyway I am Mocha the village's chief. Mocha said. So what's the quest you posted? Natsu asked eagerly. He was hoping that it was some crazy monster that needed to be dealt with. Mocha and the villagers that were behind him gave a sad look to his question. They started to remove their robes and when all was done Lucy gasped. Mocha and every villager that was present had some type of deformity. It was as if they were turning into a monster or something. It started a few years ago when the moon started to turn purple. The magic power radiating from it caused pretty much everyone to start turning into demons. We revert back to our human form once it hits morning though. Mocha said. As if on cue the sky seemed to darken and the moon was a shade of purple. Within seconds the villagers were changed into their full demonic form. This is a problem huh? Could it be a sort of magic that is causing you guys this sort of trouble? Happy asked looking them over. It's more of a curse if you think about it. We had a suspicion that a demon is the full cause of this, but we could never find it. Mocha replied. Well if it is a curse, there should be a way to get rid of it right. I always heard that a curse had a reverse effect. Lucy said. The only logical thing that could stop this curse would be to destroy the moon. Mocha replied quickly. Dean Natsu looked at Mocha as if he were mad. Destroy the moon. Preposterous. Gray shouted. I don't think any of our magic could reach that or have the capability to do that. Lucy said quietly. I think there is someone or something that's causing the moon to do that. Happy answered while glancing at the oddly purple moon. I know it sounds crazy, but I believe that is the only way. Like I said we searched for years to find a cause, but we never did. So it has to be the moon cursing us. Mocha replied firmly. Please help us. One woman shouted from the crowd. You guys accepted this quest, you should be able to figure out how to destroy the moon. Another guy said angrily. Whoa calm down. Gray said raising his hand up. I get the frustration. However we need time to figure this out. I suggest we discuss this in the morning after we get some rest. It was a hassle getting here after all. Of course. Sorry for our outburst of anger. It's just been a long time since we've had any joy. I can provide you guys lodging for the night. In return though, I expect you guys working to find a way to lift the curse. Most of us will be returned to normal in the morning, however some do not. 
Mocha said with a saddened look. This seemed to throw red flags at the group. Some didn't return normal, but others didn't. What do you mean by that? Natsu asked. Sometimes everyone isn't lucky to turn back to normal. Some stay in the demon form and lose control. We have to kill those who don't return to human form so they don't lose control over their conscious. My son was a victim and I had to kill him, Mocha replied as he let that last part sink in the air. Team Natsu's eyes widened at that. There was definitely a purposely done deed to these people if some didn't turn back. Lucy was the first to recover from the shock. I am sorry to hear that. We will try our best to figure out the problem and get you guys your lives back. She said with a reassuring smile. Aye. What she said. Happy cheered. Natsu and Gray nodded in agreement. They would find out the cause of this curse and figure it out. That is wonderful news. I can't thank you enough fairy tale. You just gave us that hope we needed to get through this. Mocha said with a smile as the villagers cheered. Let's get you guys settled in for the night. I will show you guys your lodging area and you guys are free to do what you like. Mocha said as he gestured them to follow. The mages nodded to each other and followed behind. As everyone started to head in for the night. There was someone on a rooftop of the village that seemed to watch everything unfold. This figure was a masked woman who disappeared into the shadows. The next morning arrived on the island. Team Natsu made sure they were ready to head out to go explore the island. They wanted to see if there was any way they could help the villagers besides destroying the moon. Despite the creepy monster side of the villagers, this island is quite pretty. Lucy said trying to spark a conversation. They've been walking for a while in silence. The awkwardness eating her alive. When Natsu stopped abruptly, it caught the attention of the group. What's the deal Flame Grey was cut off as Natsu raised a hand to silence him. He sniffed the air trying to catch the smell. I smell something nearby. We should be ready for an ambush. It smells like a predator. Natsu said as he continued to sniff. Are you sure Natsu? I feel as though look out. Happy shouted as a giant rat jumped out a set of trees. Natsu set his fist ablaze and was about to send a fire punch at it before Gray jumped in front and smashed his fist into his palm. Ice make. Floor. Gray shouted as the ground turned to ice. The ambushing rat eyes widened as it slipped onto the ice. Gray used the momentum of the sliding rodent to make a giant mallet of ice. As soon as the giant rat was close enough, he swung the mallet onto its head. The rat let out a grunt of pain before it fell over knocked out. That was probably the biggest rat I have ever seen in my life. Lucy said as she walked up to the now defeated creature. Yeah no kidding that thing was huge. Natsu said while looking over the creature. He then got upset when he remembered Gray stole his thunder. You damn ice brick. That was my takedown. Natsu yelled. Oh yeah Ashtray your cement block of a brain reacts too slow. Gray retorted getting in Natsu's face. Lucy sighed as she looked at the two idiots. Hey guys. There's a cave over here. Happy shouted getting their attention. Gray and Natsu stopped their little bickering and went over to check it out. Good work Happy. Exploring caves always leads to mysteries that can be solved. Natsu praised with a grin. Lucy sweat dropped at Natsu's logic and decided not to respond to that. She saw that the ground looked slick as if it were a crystal. It looks like a crystal floor. We should be careful not to break it or anything. Lucy said taking careful steps on it. The rest of the team soon followed after and was taking slow steps as well. They walked for a couple minutes until they were in a clear open area. The roof of the cave seemed to have collapsed in over time and was left with the open sky. Darn it seems this was a bust. Lucy said with disappointment. I agree, this is just an empty cave with a crystal floor. Gray replied. I guess we could do some more exploring somewhere else then. Happy added. Natsu huffed and punched the ground in annoyance. When he did that, he heard the sound like something was cracking. He looked to where he punched and seen a tiny crack. There is something off about this crystal floor guys. Natsu said grabbing their attention. He covered his fist in flames and punched the ground hard. Causing it to crack around them everywhere. You fucking idiot. Gray shouted as the ground started to crumble from underneath them. Lucy shrieked as she held on to Happy as they all fell through the floor. They fell about a good 50 feet below and landed quite roughly. Nice going Flammabrain that was totally a dumb thing no way. Gray started but was cut off when he sent something that caught his immediate attention. What was that you ice brick? Natsu retaliated only to stop at Gray's fear-stricken face. Whoa what is that happy shouted staring at the giant block of what looked like ice. Natsu and Lucy looked as well and noticed that it had something trapped in it. Inside though seemed to be a monster or something. Gray heart started to race as he stared at the creature inside. Deliora the demon of disaster he said in a low whisper. Who is this Deliora guy? Lucy asked being the only one to pay attention to his whisper. Before Gray could answer her question they heard footsteps coming from an entrance not too far from them. 
Natsu was about to get ready and be on the defense, but Gray motioned for them to follow him and hide behind some rubble from the previous floor they were on. Three people entered the cave with the frozen statue. One was a man with thick eyebrows. He looked up and noticed that the ceiling had collapsed in. Well that's unfortunate. Looks like Riaite's ceiling kind of either failed or was destroyed. The man said. It's a possibility it was destroyed since there are intruders on this island. Another man with claws said. Maybe they are here to find out about Moondrup. The woman of the group spoke up finally. That's preposterous, I highly doubt they would know of that plan. However though we will purge them and continue Moondrip. Riaite says the preparation should nearly be done. Said the first man again. He turned around and started to walk back the other way. The other two followed as well. Once their voices weren't really he were any more team Natsu came out of hiding. Well it seems they know we are on this island. Think the villagers would snitch us out. Lucy asked. Maybe or maybe not. I already have a problem with this Riaite guy though. Gray said with a bitter tone. Why's that? Happy asked. Eliora was an immortal demon who destroyed villages back in the day. My master who taught me my magic sealed him away in that ice over there at the cost of her life. I don't know what this Riaite guy or the others want with Deliora, but I will not let them mess with my master's legacy. He said with clenched fists. So what do you want to do then Grey? Natsu asked looking at the ice mage. He never seen Grey worked up over something like this before. Let's wait until nightfall and see if they return for this statue. I feel that Mundra plan will have something to do with Deliora. He's not even supposed to be here. Grey said looking at the statue. He didn't remember him being sealed in this cave or on this island before. He sat down in front of the frozen statue and looked at it. He started to remember his growing up with her and the battle that took her life. Natsu found a spot in the rubble where he could relax. Not even two minutes sitting down he was asleep. Lucy and Happy Sweat dropped at how quickly he fell asleep. Well I got someone who can pass time for us. Lucy said as she pulled out one of her celestial keys. I opened the gate of the liar, Lyra. A young girl appeared in a golden light. She beamed when she seen her summoner. Do you miss Lucy? I am so glad you finally summoned me again. It's been way too long. You gotta start summoning me more often. The young spirit complained as she was up in Lucy's face. Lucy pushed her back a bit for space and gave a small smile. I've been busy. I'll try to get better. She said. She honestly just didn't really need her that often, so she didn't really want to summon her. She couldn't tell her that though. Lucy cleared her thoughts and looked at the young spirit. Can you play us a song to lighten the mood? Lucy asked with a smile. Of course I can. I have been working on this new song that I would like you to hear. Lyra said excitedly as she summoned a harp. Lyra started to play a soft melody that started to soothe everyone. Lucy and Happy smiled as they watched the spirit play her song. Natsu even woke up once he heard the song and watched from a distance with a grin. Bray on the other hand started to tear up from hearing her song. He was starting to have flashbacks of his time with her and Lion. The tears started to fall as he remembered her smiling face as she sacrificed herself to stop Deleoria. Hey. We shouldn't be making noise as we don't know how far away they are. They could have just went around the corner for all we know. Gray said getting their attention. Lyra stopped her song and frowned. Natsu was going to talk smack to him, but he stopped when a purple beam of light hit the statue from the ceiling where they fell from. Hey we should see where that light is coming from. Natsu said as he ran out the cave entrance the people came from earlier. The rest of team Natsu quickly followed him. They hoped he didn't do anything stupid. It only took them a couple minutes of running for them to be outside. Nightfall had fallen upon them quickly. Lucy looked around and noticed that the light was coming from atop some ruins. Hey it's coming from up there. She said pointing on top of the ruins. Come on, let's get up there and see what's going on. Gray said as he started to climb up the ruins. It didn't take them long for them to make their way to the top of the ruins. They stopped behind some rocks when they seen a ritual of some sort taking place. That looks like the Moondrip ritual. Lyra whispered as she watched. Everyone looked at her in confusion before she continued. Moondrip uses the power of the moon that can dispel any spell. So you mean to tell me that they are planning to undo Ice Shell, Grey growled out as he glared at the four individuals. The four individuals started to talk amongst themselves. So them pesky villagers were hiding intruders eh? I want you three to go purge that village and find the intruders. A masked man said. Grey eyes widened when he heard the masked man's voice, it sounded familiar. Are you sure Riaite? I mean we haven't had any problems with them at all. Said another man from earlier. Don't question it. Just follow orders. Riaite said more firmly. Natsu decided he had heard enough and stood up. Okay fuck this, they aren't going to get away with this. Natsu shouted as he jumped out of his hiding spot. You aren't going to do anything to the villagers. Oh looks like they finally came. Sherry, Toby, and Yuka. Go complete the task I have given you. 
Riaite said with a shout. As soon as he said that Grey threw an ice spear at him. However it was countered quickly when Riaite formed an ice shield in front of himself to block it. So my hunch was correct. You're lying aren't you? Grey said with a glare. Riaite grinned at that and removed his mask. It's been a long time Grey. Lion said with a glare as he watched his subordinates leave. Natsu seen the group make a quick escape and started to head right after them. He was swiftly frozen by Lion. Happy took Lucy and flew after the three to stop them. Sorry, Flammabrain. You're in the way. Gray said as he kicked Natsu off the top of the ruins. He turned back to Lion with fire in his eyes. I think that you are here to dishonor her. What the hell is going on with you? Gray shouted in anger. You have no right to say that when you are the one who are responsible for her death. Lion fired back with venom. Gray lashed out and and created an ice dragon to attack Lion. The latter laughed as he used one hand and sent a stronger ice dragon to destroy Gray's. Back on the beach. Naruto and Urza had finally made it to the island after they found a pirate ship heading towards the island mid-flight. They thanked the crew as they were dropped off on the beach. Good thing we found that ship. It made it much easier than flying the entire way. Urza said with a smile. She still had to admit his magic still sent shivers down her spine. There was something about that ability that she had questions about. It's no big deal. I am honestly surprised that ship came into view. I don't know how long I could have flew a haha. Naruto said sheepishly as he scratched the back of his head. Now since we're here. We should try to find either civilization or Natsu and the others. Urza said seriously. Well I am following you. I am the worst when trying to find my way. Naruto said with a soft laugh. Urza shook her head at that began to walk towards the woods. Naruto followed right after making sure to stay with her. With Grey and Lion. The two former ice pupils of Ur was going back and forth with their ice magic. Grey was obviously outclassed by Lion. With the latter only needing one hand to perform his magic. Grey panted as he jumped back to dodge another barrage of ice spears thrown at him. He was trying to think of a way to outwit Lion. He was brought out of his thoughts as Lion spoke up again. You know neither of us will get to surpass her because of your mistake to cause her death. Lion said. First of all, that was not my fault. Secondly, what does that have to do with this Mundra plan? Gray asked. Well to defeat the one thing Ur couldn't of course. That's my way of surpassing her. Lion said with a grin. Gray eyes widened at that and froze. Did Lion really just say that? To revive the thing that his master Herokli sacrificed herself to defeat. Just so he could beat it and surpass her. What a twisted ideal. Gray was brought out of his thoughts when he felt a sharp pain in his stomach. He looked down and seen that Lion had stabbed him with an ice sword. He looked at Lion with horror before his vision went black from being knocked unconscious from an ice boar running into him. Lion just scoffed at this former rival before he turned to leave. He had to go reevaluate his plans and recover his magic before he can finish Moondrip. Shortly after Natsu finally made his way back to the top of the ruined temple that he was kicked off of. His ice prison was shattered when he hit the ground below. He looked around and noticed that there was no one there and shattered ice all over the place. Yo Grey. He shouted in panic as he saw his guildmate knocked out. He seen his bleeding wound in his stomach and burned it to close it up. Which earned a groan of pain from Grey. Sheesh ice pick, you got your ass kicked. He said as he picked up the fallen ice mage. He decided to head back to the village and regroup with Lucy. That would be their best course of action. I appreciate it Natsu Grey said in a low whisper. No mention it buddy. When you're better though, I am going to kick your ass for kicking me off the top of the ruins. He said with a light-hearted laugh. Gray gave a pained grin as he looked at the ground. I am sorry for trying to stop you guys for taking this quest. I was just being selfish and now I realize that I have no right to stop my guildmates. He said as tears started to form in his eyes. Natsu scoffed at that. Man stop being such a drama queen. Taking that L from Lion is making you say crazy insecure stuff. A fairy tale maid shouldn't let stuff like that hold them down and only move forward. Natsu said. Gray didn't respond and kept looking at the ground. Thanks Natsu with Lucy. Lucy and Happy were the first to make it back to the village. She relayed everything that had occurred at the ruins and in the cave. Mocha and the villagers were shocked to say the least at her story. They didn't really know what to do at the situation and asked a young mage what her plan of action were. It took her a while to think of something, but she thought maybe setting a trap would be the best. Which led her to her current task with her spirit Virgo. This should be sufficient enough as a trap Miss Lucy. Is there anything else you need from me? Virgo said with a bow. No this pitfall should work fine if they walk through the gates. Thanks very much, you can return now. She told the maid spirit with a smile. Virgo nodded and closed her gate. Lucy looked around to see that all the villagers were looking at her with worry on their faces. She gave a small smile of reassurance before she turned around to the sound of running footsteps. That was quick she thought. 
The gate guards gripped their weapons tightly. They were scared of the outcome, but were willing to protect everyone at all cost. However before any of them could react, a blur of pink ran past the gates and yelped. Lucy groaned when she recognized that yelp. She ran over and seen Natsu and Grey in the bottom of her pitfall trap. She smacked her forehead at the trap that was ruined. So much for that. Lucy said as she looked at the two. She gasped when she saw Grey's injuries. I are you okay Natsu? Happy said looking at his best friend. Yeah I am fine. He replied. What happened to Grey? He looks really bad. Lucy said with worry. He lost to that Riaite guy. Natsu said as he hurled Grey up out of the pitfall. He then proceeded to jump out himself. That guy must be strong to beat Grey. I want to crack at him. Natsu said punching his palm. We need to get Grey to Lucy was cut off when she seen something flying overhead. It was that blue rodent they attacked earlier in the day. Natsu and Happy looked up as well when they heard laughter coming from on top of it. That thing can fly Natsu shouted in shock. He went wide-eyed when he seen the mouse drop some type of green substance from a bucket. That doesn't look friendly. He thought. He quickly turned to shout at the villagers. Hey all you villagers run to the center. If that hits us we're toast. Natsu screamed as he turned back to watch the corrosive looking liquid fall from the sky. Natsu set his hands ablaze and he slammed his fist together to make a giant fireball. He let it grow before he threw it at the sludge. Fire dragon's brilliant flame. The attack worked in stopping the sludge from falling right on top of them, but instead it spread out and hit all the rest of the settlements of the village. Instantly destroying anything it touched. Some of the villagers screamed and some wept at the destruction of their homes. Damn it, he stopped it from killing them. We need to go down there and fight. One of the men said. You heard him Angelica. Take us down to the village to fight. A pink-haired woman said to the rodent. It nodded and started to descend. It didn't take long for them to reach the ground. The two men jumped off the rodent and was now facing Natsu and Lucy. Hey get out of here you all. It is not safe anymore. Natsu yelled at the villagers. They got the message right away and started to run the other way. Sherry don't let them escape. Said one of the men. He had long claws and the face of a bear. The pink haired girl nodded and motioned for the rat to follow. Oh no you don't. Lucy said as she used her whip to grab onto the foot of the rodent named Angelica. She yelled in panic at how high it took her in the air. Happy flew after her to make sure to catch her if she fell. Natsu turned around back to his two opponents after Lucy and the other woman named Sherry took off. He grinned as he set his hands on fire. Okay which one of you are first? He asked still grinning. You're quite arrogant Salamander. We know who you are and it won't be an easy fight. The shorter man with thick eyebrows said. I'm all fired up. Natsu said as he charged the two men. With Lucy. Lucy was currently holding on to the foot of Angelica for dear life. This was such a stupid idea. She thought as tried not to look down. She knew that were way up in the air and she had a fear of heights. Happy reassured her he would catch her if she fell. They're quite the pest little celestial mage. Came the voice of Sherry as she looked over to see her still hanging on. Lucy glared at the woman. These people were really going to harm some villagers that were innocent. She thought of an idea that may get these two away from the villagers they were pursuing. She smirked as she started to tickle the rodent's foot. The reaction was instantaneous and Angelica started to squirm and laugh. She tried to shake her off but it was to no avail. Eventually that caused her to lose control of flight and make her fall. All three screamed as they started to head to the earth quickly. Angelica left a giant crater where she landed and was out of commission from the rough landing. Lucy and Sherry bounced off of her when they landed. Each hitting the ground roughly and landing not too far from each other. Lucy groggily stood up as she rubbed her head from the fall. Happy found her and came to check on her. Are you okay Lucy? That was quite a fall. He asked. He would have tried to catch her if it wasn't for the fact the giant rat started flailing wildly. Why yeah I am okay. Just roughed myself up a bit. She said with a light-hearted laugh. She stopped laughing when she heard footsteps come up behind her. She looked to see the pink-haired woman Sherry was glaring at her with anger in her eyes. You are starting to piss me off little mage. I am going to crush you, doll attack. Rock doll. Sherry screamed. Lucy yelped as she had to quickly dodge an attack from a rock golem that appeared from out of nowhere. She took out one of her celestial keys to quickly summon help. I open the gate of the golden bull. Taurus. She chanted. The muscular cow-like bull appeared with a giant axe. Get away from Miss Lucy Moo. He shouted as he swung his axe at the rock golem with a devastating blow and destroyed it instantly. Good work Taurus. I need you too she stopped when she seen Taurus stiffened. Sherry gave a smug grin to Lucy as he pointed towards her. Taurus, kill her now. She said. Lucy's eyes widened in shock when Taurus turned around. His eyes were red and he looked at her with the intent to chop her up. He brought his axe above his head then got ready to bring it down on top of her. 
Hey what the heck is going on Lucy screamed as she jumped out of the way to avoid being chopped in half. Taurus pulled his axe from the crater he left and started to rush Lucy. Lucy started to panic in fear as her own spirit was trying to kill her now. She felt hurt that she was betrayed. She let out a shriek when she tripped and landed on her butt. Taurus loomed over her as he got ready to attack again. I can control anything with my magic. Even celestial spirits. Unfortunately I can't control humans though otherwise this fight would have been over. Sherry said with a smirk. This was all too easy. Lucy thinking quickly decided it was best to force close Taurus gate. As he brought up his axe to finish her, she held up his key. I closed the gate of the bull. She shouted out as the key glowed. Taurus stopped and vanished in a golden light. Sherry's eyes widened when she did that. She was not expecting her to be able to pull something off like that. It was quite hard to close a celestial gate right. Lucy let out a sigh of relief when she saw she was in the clear. That was quite terrifying. The fact she can control a celestial spirit is crazy. Lucy thought as she looked Sherry. The woman was still getting over the shock of her closing the gate. She took that chance to summon a less powerful spirit. I opened the gate of the dog. Plu. She chanted as a silver key glowed. Her cute little pet dog Plu appeared in front of Lucy with his normal happiness. He waved to her with a giant smile before he went stiff. Sherry grinned when she saw that she got control of the next celestial spirit that was summoned. Go ahead Plu and get her. She commanded. Plu growled and attacked Lucy. Sherry eyes widened when she saw that Plu didn't do any damage to her. She glared at the blonde mage who gave her a smug grin. So you summon a useless spirit to try and protect yourself. Fine doll attack. Rock doll. Sherry shouted as the previously destroyed golem came back to life in full force. Lucy panicked and took off into the woods. Sherry laughed as she gave chase with Plu and the golem. She always loved a game of cat and mouse. You can't run forever celestial mage. She called out to the blonde. If I can just make it to the beach. I can summon Aquarius and have her attack both of us. She would love to do that. Lucy said out loud to herself as she sprinted through the woods. It only took her a couple minutes of running before she made it to the shore. She took out Aquarius key and held it towards the water. I opened the gate of the water bearer. Aquarius. She chanted out. The key glowed for a second and before she knew it the blue-haired mermaid beauty was right in front of her. Aquarius had a look of annoyance on her face. She glared at the one who summoned her and decided to taunt her. This better be good. I was on a date you little harlot. She growled. I'm sorry to bother you. I it's been a while and I thought it would be okay. You see Lucy tried to explain but stopped when she watched Aquarius go stiff. Her eyes glowed red meaning she was under control. She turned to see that Sherry was there with a grin on her face with her golem and Plu. Lucy forced Plu's gate closed which confused Sherry. Aquarius is quite the powerful spirit am I wrong? You just wished you death to bring her out but you closed that weak spirit's gate. Sherry said as she slowly approached Lucy. Keeping the blonde between herself and the celestial spirit. Perfect Lucy thought. Aquarius summoned her urn and aimed it at Lucy. Next thing she knew a massive blast of water hit Lucy but it also hit Sherry and destroyed her golem. Catching Sherry off guard with that attack caused her magic to be cancelled. I never liked being controlled. Aquarius said after she regained control. She then turned to the blonde that was knocked away from her laid out next to the pink haired woman. Your personality still hasn't changed. You'll never find a boyfriend at this rate. She mocked as she closed her own gate. Lucy groaned as she stood up slowly. Aquarius attack not only knocked the wind out of her but it also made her dizzy. She seen Sherry started to get up slowly. I am low on magic. The attack should have knocked her out of the loop too though. The blonde thought as she shakily made her way to Sherry. Sherry on the other hand was dizzy. She was not expecting that attack to be so strong but to also send her spinning like that. Her head was spinning and to make it worse, her magic power was low since she took control of so many spirits. She seen Lucy approaching her and had to think quickly. Once Lucy was within range she leaped up as quick as she could and tried to get a hard slap towards her face to knock her off balance. Lucy being the more alert of the two quickly ducked under her attack. Sherry eyes widened when she seen Lucy arm come in for a clothesline. When the attack from the blonde connected Sherry was knocked onto her back. Lucy stood over the pinkette breathing hard. It looks like I was the best woman of this fight. Please just accept defeat. Lucy said as she looked down at her fallen opponent. Sherry tried to move but her body was not cooperating. She was just too exhausted to fight anymore. I won't be the only one going down as well. Angelica. Squash her now. Sherry shouted out. A few moments later and the giant rodent came out of the woods. She made her way to Lucy with a smirk as the blonde fell down onto her knees. Sherry let out a laugh before she lost consciousness from exhaustion. Lucy sat there defeated as she knew she didn't have the strength to run. Darn I was so close. I'm sorry guys at least I was able to slow them down. She thought as her eyes started to tear up. 
Before Angelica could reach Lucy, the rodent stopped when it heard a loud noise. She looked around before something slammed hard into her back from above. Lucy's eyes widened when she saw the new guy Naruto with a blue spiraling orb of magic appear out of nowhere. Rasengan. He shouted as the spiraling blue orb expanded and slammed Angelica into the ground hard, causing a massive explosion. Lucy covered her eyes from the sand and dust that went into the air. After the sand and dust settled, she seen Angelica was defeated in a deep crater with Naruto standing on top of her. For someone to have no qualities to be a mage, he sure has the power of one. Lucy thought as she watched the blonde make his way over to her. Glad we made it in time. Naruto said with a smile. Lucy gave a smile and nodded back in appreciation. She then got confused when she realized he said we. It's only you. What do you mean we Naruto? Lucy asked. Her only response was a nervous chuckle from her fellow blonde. Before she could ask, she got a feeling of dread behind her. Shakingly turning around she came face to face with Urza standing behind her with a tied up happy in her arms. The Urza. Lucy shouted in shock and fear. This was bad, if she's here that means this mission was over. Hopefully she would hear out the situation. Let's get back to the village so you can rest, and then we will find Natsu. This mission is over, since you're not authorized to be here. Urza said with a glare as she looked at the blonde rookie mage. Lucy and Happy's only response was I as they departed. Bray had awakened the next morning feeling a little sore. He sat himself up and stretched his body. He looked down to see he was all bandaged up pretty nicely. I wonder how everyone is doing. I can't believe I let myself get beat like that. He thought as he walked out of the little tent he was in. Gray looked around and noticed he was on a different side of the village he didn't see when they first got there. Good to see you're awake. Was starting to get bored sitting here. Came a male's voice that caught his attention. Gray looked over to see a blonde male with whisker marks leaned up against a wall. He opened his eyes and looked at Gray with a smile. You're the new guy Naruto right? How did you get here? Gray asked with a confused look. This was the last person he had expected to be here. Especially with how hard it took for them to get here. Naruto stood up straight off the wall and walked over to Gray. I asked to tag along with Urza to retrieve you guys from your mission. Apparently you guys aren't allowed to do these types of missions. He said. Gray sweat dropped at the mention of Urza's name. He knew if she was here that meant trouble for them all. Well I can tell you now that I don't intend to go back just yet. I have to help these people, especially when I know what is going on now. Gray said seriously. Naruto raised an eyebrow at him. He looks pretty determined to do this. He thought. Naruto honestly wasn't even going to try and stop him. He just wanted to tag along and test what he could do. Save the explanation for Urza. I was just only tasked to look over you and make sure no one bothered you. Naruto said with a chuckle. Bray just stared at the mysterious guy before shrugging. Well I appreciate it man. Would you mind showing me where the others are? He asked. Naruto nodded and proceeded to walk to where the others were. They walked in silence as they made their way over to where the rest of the fairy tale mages were. It only took them a couple minutes of walking before they were outside of a tent. Naruto held it open for Gray to go first. Gray gave an appreciative nod and walked into the tent. Gray sweat dropped when he seen Lucy and Happy tied up with tears in their eyes. He sighed when he made eye contact with the furious glare of Urza. Thanks for bringing him Naruto. The redeed said to the blonde. I am only going to ask you once. Why? Urza demanded as she looked at the ice mage. Bray fist bowled up as he thought of Lion came to mind. I was going to stop them back at the harbor when I found out they stole a quest. However I let myself get taunted by Natsu. Gray said coolly. Urza hummed to herself in thought. She wanted to tear into Gray, but she knows he is more understanding than Natsu. She was brought out of her thoughts when Gray asked a question. Where is Natsu? Is he out helping the villagers? Gray asked Lucy. I have no idea where he is. I was in battle with Sherry and was found by Urza and Naruto here. Last time I saw him, he fought the other two guys that were with Lion. Lucy said. Which is why we will find him and we will leave the island. Urza added in after Lucy. I am not leaving. Gray stated firmly. What was that? Urza replied with a threatening glare. Lucy and Happy gaped at Gray. Naruto watched the two mages in silence. Silently observing the situation. Would you care to repeat that? Urza asked as she stood up. I said I am not Gray didn't get to finish as a blade was pointed at his throat by Urza. She gazed at Gray with a look that screamed she was ready to pounce. You are in no position to be telling me what you are going to do. You disobeyed master's orders and took a quest that isn't allowed to wizards in your class. Urza growled. Gray grabbed her blade and pointed it away from his throat. He gave Urza the same equal glare which caught her off guard. I don't give a damn about those rules. These people are in trouble and the man that is causing this is someone I need to stop personally. If I have to get through you just to get to him so be it. 
However you will not be leaving this island with me until I am sure these people are safe. Gray declared. Lucy and Happy Mouth was open and shocked. They never expected someone to step up to Urza. Gray must have had balls of steel. This kid is quite bousy. Reading this girl's emotions, she is not one you want to piss off. Kurama said to Naruto in his mind. Naruto nodded in agreement as he stayed watching. I wish I had them balls back home. I would have gotten pummeled into the ground. Urza requipped her sword and sighed. Very well if you wish to help these people this much we will finish this quest. She said. She was shocked that Grace stood up to her. He was the last one she expected to do that. Lucy and Happy let out a sigh of relief. Urza turned to the two quickly and gave them a glare that scared them. You still aren't off the hook when this is over. There will be repercussions. She said. When they nodded she cut them free. Since that's all taken care of what is the plan? Naruto asked finally speaking up. Everyone turned to him as they got ready to plan their counter-attack. Back at the temple ruins. So Sherry and Yuka was defeated. Such an unfortunate event Toby. Lion said with a frown. He was just brought up to speed of the battle that happened the previous night. That shouldn't slow us down. Moon drip is nearly complete. We just can't let the ones who defeated your people stop us now. I don't need to remind you of the consequences Lion. Said a green-haired man. I know Zalti. I have no worries of the new arrivals, I should be able to beat them with my power. Lion declared. Good, I would be joining in as well. He said with a smirk. Lion was going to respond to that before the ground started to shake beneath them. A few moments later and Natsu came crashing through the ground covered in flames. Salamander Lion and Zalti shouted in shock. Before they could retaliate Natsu blasted himself into Lion with his fire. However it turned out to be an ice clone as Lion shattered into ice. Am thought I could catch you off guard. Natsu cursed. It's going to take more Lion was cut off as Natsu jumped into the air and sent a blast of flame towards Lion. The latter summoned an ice wall to block the attack. Natsu smirked as he landed on the ground. He sucked in the fire that hit the wall back into his lungs. Fire dragons roar. He shouted as a torrent of flames erupted from his mouth towards Lion. Lion was preparing to retaliate before Natsu's breath missed him. He watched as Natsu shouted as he fell through the floor. He looked towards Zalti when he seen the orb that was glowing. What is that magic? Lion asked confused. I can't let you be defeated when Moon Drip is so close to being completed. Zalti said with a smirk while completely ignoring Lion's question. Their attention was brought back to Natsu who quickly made his way back up the ruined temple. They're quite annoying. I will make sure you won't get back up this time. Lion growled out as he froze the entire area around them. Why are you trying to revive a demon? Natsu asked as his god in a defensive stance. The surpass my master er. Lion said simply. Why don't you just fight her yourself? She's dead and gray is the reason she was killed. Lion said as he sent a giant ice wave towards Natsu. Natsu dodged and lit his fist ablaze. I don't know your full intentions, but you are going to pay for hurting the villagers. With Naruto and company. Gray and the rest of the team had made their way through the forest back to the temple. Along the way Gray told them of his past and why Lion was doing what he was doing. When Naruto heard Gray's story he was kind of reminded a little bit of Danzo in a way. He was bitter of his fellow pupil because of his master's death. He didn't meet the guy so he doubted he was like Danzo. As they continued to walk they were soon confronted by two figures. Lucy groaned as she recognized who they were. Sherry and Yuka was waiting outside the temple. They got in a battle stance as the fairy tale wizards approached them. So it looks like he was trying to delay us from the ritual. Urza said as she requipped a longsword. Lucy grabbed her whip since she knew her spirits would be useless against Sherry. Naruto and Gray was about to get ready to fight, but Urza shouted out to them. Gray take Naruto with you and go handle Lion and stop this ritual. Lucy and I will make quick work of these two. Urza commanded as she got ready to fight the followers. D this is going to be hard. Titania is very powerful. Sherry said nervously. Yuka nodded as he started to sweat. He never expected his life to be against an S-class like Urza. He always heard stories, but now he was her opponent. Gray shook his head as he ran past the other three to go handle Lion. He looked back to shout for Naruto, but was silenced when he saw the blonde running next to him. Naruto it looks like this Natsu guy is already confronting two people. Just to give you a heads up. Jayuki said to Naruto. Afka, I am kind of excited because this is my chance to try out some abilities. Naruto replied back. Try not to go too crazy since this place isn't the most suitable training area. Kurama chipped in. Naruto wanted to finish their conversation, but he had seen that they reached an iced wall blocking the way back to the ruins. The SK lion really thought this would stop me. Gray said to no one in particular. He then placed a palm onto the ice wall and made it collapse. Naruto raised an eyebrow at that and was about to ask a question before Gray bolted inside. 
At least they like to get straight to work Naruto thought with a smirk. It didn't take them long before they were inside witnessing Natsu and Lion go back and forth fighting. Lion. Gray shouted which caused the two mages to turn their attention to the newcomers. Oh you actually recovered Gray. I didn't think you had it in you to return. Lion said with a sneer. This has gone on long enough. You and your followers need to leave now. Gray said getting into a stance that made Lion mouth drop. You wouldn't. I would. You are going to pay for trying to meddle with something that's in the past. Natsu stay out of this. Gray said as a magic circle formed around his feet. So you are going to use Ice Shell to sacrifice yourself. For what? My followers will continue the spell even if you use it on me. Lion said with a laugh. I'm giving you one last warning, Gray said with narrow eyes as he started to activate the spell. Isn't that the spell he said that took his master's life Naruto thought. He started to move and stop Gray, but he saw a pink blur to the right that was quicker. Natsu cocked his fist back and hit Gray with a blow that knocked him to the ground hard. Gray looked up at Natsu in stupor as he held his cheek. What are you doing Flammabrain? Why the hell you think killing yourself to stop this guy is the right choice? That is a coward's way out and it's not something a fairy tale wizard would do. Natsu shouted as he looked down at the ice mage. Gray gave a look of shame as he let Natsu's words sink in. The salmon-haired mage was right about him being a coward. He was just thinking rashly and wasn't thinking about who he would affect with iced shell. Natsu held out his hand to help Gray up. I've got your back to take him down. There's no reason to give your life up for something in your past. You keep moving forward past it. Natsu said encouragingly. Gray smiled and was about to take Natsu's hand before the ground started to realign the temple that Natsu previously tilted. When they looked they seen a laughing green-headed man appear. You are most definitely welcome lion. I will be continuing the ritual while you do what you have to. The green-haired man said as he ran off to go continue the ritual. That sneaky bastard. Natsu growled in anger and got ready to run off. However Naruto beat him to it and ran off. I'll go handle this guy. Stay here and support Gray, Natsu. Naruto shouted as he chased after the mystery figure. Gray and Natsu looked after the blonde as he ran off. They jumped out of the way when an ice eagle nearly collided into them. Never expected such an underhand tactic lion. Gray said as he got ready to fight back. Natsu set his fist ablaze preparing as well. Since it's two on one now do you blame me? Lion replied with a sneer. This was not going the way he intended. Who was that guy? He had only expected Natsu to be the only challenge, but he was not told of this mystery guy. Well Zalti should be fine. He seems competent enough. Back with Naruto. Naruto had his Sharingan activated as he was in pursuit of the green-haired man. The guy tried to be slippery and mask his presence, but having the Sharingan made it easy to see where he was located. He looked up to see that the ceiling above him was falling towards him. He quickly made a Rasengan that got large and held it up to destroy the falling debris. When he looked to see the rocks were destroyed he looked to see them starting to revert and the ceiling was repaired again. What the? Naruto said confusingly. It's a type of lost magic if that is what you're wondering. Said the green-haired man. Naruto turned to his voice and see that he had disappeared again. I guess he thinks this is a game of cat and mouse. Naruto sat down quickly and closed his eyes. Not even a second later he opened his eyes and the Sharingan was replaced by the similar toad eyes he was known for. I like to see you get away from me now. Naruto thought as he ran after the presence he had been chasing. It looks like this person can use magic that has something to do with time. I don't know if you were paying attention, but that ceiling had went back in time and repaired itself. Kurama said. Back quote I kind of figured that since the rocks had disappeared before my Rasengan destroyed the rocks Naruto asked while chasing after the person. It only took him a little bit more of running before he came to an open room and the green-haired person who he was chasing. I think you would follow me all the way here when the ritual is about to start again. I was just meant to distract Yao. The green-haired man said with a smirk. That's fine, I know my comrades will prevail and stop the ritual. Naruto replied back with a grin. Well once I take care of you I will swiftly handle them. I am Zalti by the way, what is your stranger? Zalti asked. I am Naruto Uzumaki, and that's quite the strange name for a woman in my opinion. Naruto said with a sly smirk. He had reactivated his Sharingan when he reached the guy to be able to predict his attacks. He saw a woman was under that transformation. What are you talking about? Zalti said kind of wavering. He had not expected that to come out of this guy's mouth. You can cut the act Zalti I can see your true self under that transformation. I would rather you not pretend to be something you're not, it may slow you down. Naruto said while still grinning. Zalti only frowned as he let the transformation dispel. Standing in front of Naruto was now a violet-haired beauty who wore a white tight-fitting battle suit. The outfit hugged her curves perfectly, which made Naruto's eyes widen at her beauty. She had on red lipstick that went well with her deep brown eyes. 
It shouldn't be possible for you to see through that transformation. The woman said. Transformation magic is hard to read through if you know how to properly do it correctly. Well unfortunately I did. Naruto said with a shrug. This irritated the woman as she sent her crystal orb at Naruto at a quick pace. Naruto jumped out of the way at the last second. Zalti however smirked and the orb vanished and reappeared in front of Naruto and nearly caught him in the face. What's with this orb? Naruto said as he tried to avoid getting hit by the crystal ball that kept reappearing out of different angles. It looks like she controls time somehow. However looking at it from your point of view it's only the object she uses. Said Jayuki to his blonde host. I guess that's why the ceiling went back to normal. Naruto replied. He grabbed a couple shuriken out of his pouch and launched the matter quickly. Zalti eyes widened as the projectiles came at her quickly. She was not expecting him to throw weapons at her. She quickly took control of the shurikens and they changed directions back towards Naruto. That is ridiculous. Naruto said as he dodged out of the way of his shuriken. Zalti smiled as she was able to gain control of the situation again. Not every day you see a mage throw projectiles and not infuse it with magic. No matter to me I'll counter whatever he throws at me. She thought with glee. She was brought out of her thoughts when Naruto decided to talk to her. Why are you guys doing this? What good will come from reviving this demon? Naruto asked. I have my reasons. Why would I tell an enemy who would never understand? She replied sending out her orb again. Naruo quickly dodged and decided he needed to close the gap between them. He quickly threw a kunai at her and waited for it to get as close as it could. Before Zalti could use her magic to redirect it, he shoeshined with the kunai and had her Rasengan in hand. Zalti eyes widened and she brought her crystal orb up to block the blue orb in the blonde's hand. However it was shattered instantly and he brought it close to her chest. Before it reached her she restored her orb back in front of her again to block the attack again. Naruto's eyes widened and this gave her the chance to summon a sword from magical energy that she quickly gathered in her hand. She took a swing aimed for Naruto's neck. This is over. She yelled out as the blade came down quickly towards the blonde's neck. This sneak attack was short-lived when the blade hit him he disappeared in a poof of smoke. But before she could even process what happened her sword was knocked from her hand and she was thrown to the ground hard. She looked over her shoulder to see the blonde had her pinned down. He was looking at her deep red eyes that made her blood go cold. As she looked at them she seen the pupils were surrounded by three tumble looking things. I believe this is checkmate Zalti Naruto said seriously as he held a kunai to her neck. Zalti held her breath as she was waiting for her end. However that never happened as the blonde that was previously sitting on her got off of her. She turned around to look at him in shock and was greeted with an outstretched hand to help her up. Why didn't you finish me? She asked in a low whisper. I don't have a reason to kill you. I just wanted to make sure I stopped you from completing this ritual. Naruto said. He didn't sense any evil intentions from her at all. Zalti started to shake in fear but also in rage. This didn't go unnoticed by Naruto when he seen her fist ball up. Ultier she said while still using a low voice. What? Ultier is my name. You've bested me today and you earned to know my name. She said as she glowed before she vanished. Hey wait. Naruto started after her but it was already too late. The mysterious beauty named Altier was already gone. She was too embarrassed to be beaten. Matatabi chipped in. The blonde nodded in agreement before he realized he needed to get back to the others. Hearing a loud roar made him rush back to the others. Please don't tell me this thing has been revived. Naruto shouted out as he ran. Somewhere in the woods with Altier. Altier stood against a tree in the forest as she looked up to the sky. She took a deep breath before she summoned her orb as she got ready to contact someone. Did the mission get completed finally? came the voice of a man. Unfortunately no. This ritual is a bust and not because of the fact that we couldn't complete it. There is a new foe that is a problem. She said seriously. I thought it was only Natsu that was the big problem. The man asked. It was until this blonde guy that accompanied them. He's mysterious, but he is very strong. He read my arc of time like it was nothing. What made it worse, he had me at knife point and I was at his mercy. She said with anger. She had never been at anyone's mercy before. It terrified her because he could have done anything to her. I see, well it's all good. Dili Oria is probably dead anyway from being frozen for so long. The man said. Maybe. I will meet up with you soon Seagrain. I need to get more intel on this guy before I leave. Altier said. Very well did you at least get his name? The man now named Seagrain asked. Naruto Yuzumaki. Altier said as she closed the communication link. She looked back towards the temple before she departed into the woods. Back with Team Natsu. Naruto shortly arrived back to the middle cave where he last seen Grey and Natsu fighting Lion. Urza waved him over as he seen them all looking over to him. What was that big roar? Naruto asked as he arrived. Well Dili Aura briefly revived when the ice melted. 
however he was long dead because his soul deteriorated over time and his body just crumbled from being frozen for so long. Urza said. I see. What about the other guys? Me and Urza took care of the two outside quickly and came inside when Grey was finished beating Lion over there. Lucy said pointing to the tied up group of mages. Lion was just sitting there glaring at them. That Toby guy got his ass handed to him again. Natsu said with a toothy smile. Naruto grinned at that and nodded. What about Zalti? Were you able to catch him? Gray asked. Yeah about that. Zalti turned out to be this chick named Dultier. I beat her after getting past her annoying time magic, but she vanished before I could capture her. Naruto stated. He had to admit she was not even trying. Neither was he, but he could see her magic was off the charts with his Sharingan. I got a feeling I will be seeing her again soon. Naruto thought to himself. Dultier ha. Huh? That was Ur's daughter's name. I would hate to think she was trying to revive the demon that took her mother's life. Gray said thinking. Possibly, I tried to get her motives, but she wouldn't speak. Oh well it can't be helped. Urza said finally speaking up. Since the ritual is cancelled we finished our guest right. Natsu asked. Lucy and Happy started to celebrate. It would, but the villagers are still under that curse. Urza said which quickly ended that celebration. Lion you guys been doing that ritual for three years now and have never been affected. Gray asked his former pupil. Moon Drip has nothing to do with that village. We never even went over there while we were here. Lion replied. That means there's an even bigger threat to the village. We should head back over there and talk to the chief. Urza said. What she said, they are probably hiding something from you all. Lion added as well. Well we don't have all day. Let's get this show on the road. Natsu shouted as he grabbed Happy and ran off towards the village. Everyone else sighed as they followed suit. Before Grey left, he stopped and looked back to his former pupil. You should try to find a guild and find something worth fighting for Lion. It may bring peace to you after all these years. Grey said before he waved and left. Lion just looked at his former pupil and watched him leave silently. Grey words had some type of truth to it. How long has he been bitter about what happened to her? Was he finally ready to let go? He was brought out of his musings when he heard a yawn. Sherry had woken up and rubbed her back. Sheesh that was definitely not a comfortable sleep. She complained. Hey Sherry, how does joining a guild sound? Lion asked with a smile. Sherry looked at him with shock before a bright smile appeared on her face. That would be lovely. At the village. Team Natsu and Naruto had finally arrived back at the village. It looked like the village had been restored back to its original look before it was destroyed by Sherry's attack. Along the way Naruto answered some questions that Urza had earlier of his abilities he shown her before they arrived. He skipped around certain things because it was still early, but he gave them some hints on his fighting style. Once they were in the village ground. Urza came back with the village chief and others who wanted to know what was going on. So we stopped this ritual that was outside in the forest. We thought maybe that would end your curse, but it seems like it wasn't the case. Urza said. Loka just rubbed his chin before he answered. We honestly never thought to go over to the temple. We have heard explosions and we went to check, but we always ended back up at the village for some reason. And if that's the case then Urza trailed off as she requiped into her giant empress armor. She looked towards Natsu seriously. It is time we destroyed the moon Natsu. I want you to use your fire as a boost of velocity for my spear to hit the moon. She stated. Sounds like a plan. Natsu said as she got ready to breathe fire. Is this the only way? Naruto asked with a bit of concern. Destroying the moon was a really big deal. It will be fine. Urza said as she threw her spear with as much force as she could. Natsu breathed a torrent of fire that propelled the spear at an even greater speed. Naruto was going to try and stop it before he saw it shatter through what looked like a glass dome. I wasn't expecting that. Lucy said in awe. I happy said chipping in. Moon Drip had a side effect of leaving magic residue which over time formed that crystal dome of magic. Which is why the moon was looking purple. Urza said. Happy looked around and noticed that the villagers didn't turn back from their monster forms. They're still demons. That is because that is their true form Happy. It seems like they must have forgotten that because of the ritual. It made them believe they were something weren't. Urza stated. Everyone mouthed a no as they looked on in confusion. Before any more questions were asked someone from the villagers spoke up. Now everything makes sense to me now. Lucy, Happy, Grey and Natsu eyes widened when they recognized a fisherman Bobo that had disappeared from the water storm. It's good to see you're okay man. We thought you were lost to sea after that wave. Grey said. Oh no I flew back to the village after the wave. I couldn't smell or see you guys in the fog so I flew home and hoped for the best. I regained my memories when that crash happened and I kind of figured we were under some magic when we all thought we were human. Bobo added. Well since everything is back to normal we should celebrate. I thank you fairy tale for saving us. 
Chief Mocha said with a smile. Some fellow demons roared in joy and took off to the skies to fly around. Others started to prepare a great feast. Urza turned to the others with a smile on her face. Now the mission is complete. Lucy, Happy and Natsu started to cheer but was shut down when Urza's smile turned into a frown. She glared at the three which made them shrivel in fear. Since the mission is over we can start discussing your punishment. You three are not off the hook at all. She said sternly. Aye, the three said as Urza began to scold them. Bray turned when he heard a chuckle come from his side. Looks like all is well then. At least everyone is safe right? Naruto asked. Yeah that's all that matters. Gray said. They sat in silence while listening to Urza scold the others before Gray decided to speak up again. I appreciate you tagging along with Urza Naruto. I am still getting to know you, but having you guys there helped me overcome my past. No problem man. I am always willing to help a friend in need. Naruto said with a smile. It was going to take some time, but he wanted the members of Fairy Tale to know he will do his best to help them in need. They gave him a home when he first started off here, and in return he will give them his friendship and protection. Bray smiled back before he looked up to the sky. I hope you aren't too mad at me, er. I promise you there won't be a disappointment from me again. No way said Lucy as she gaped at the horror in front of her. You've got to be kidding me. Gray spoke up. What the hell happened? Natsu shouted in anger. The crew just returned from the Luna Island and was now standing in front of a destroyed guild hall with metal poles stuck into it. The guild was attacked by Phantom Lord. Came a sweet voice that drew their attention. They all turned to see Marahan walking up to them. She had a defeated look as she looked at their destroyed hall. The bastards wait until I get a hold Natsu was cut off as he was hit in the back of the head by Urza. Quiet down. Was anybody hurt Mira? Urza asked turning to the barmaid. Everyone seems to be in good health. We are all hanging out in the basement until we can repair the damages. Mira said opening the guild door. She gestured for them to follow her inside to the basement. It only took them a few moments to reach the basement. Once they were in sight Makarov was the first to greet them. Welcome back you all. How was your mission? He asked all nonchalantly. It was not to Urza started but was cut off by a certain angry dragon slayer. What the hell master? I know we aren't going to just let these guys go with destroying our guild Natsu shouted. Well of course not my boy, but you also have to realize that stole a highly dangerous S-class mission. Makarov said with a glare. Natsu started to sweat bullets as he looked over to Lucy for support. However she raised her hands up innocently. I accept whatever punishment master. I broke the rules and I am sorry. She said defeated. Natsu gaped at that and looked at Gray. I messed up and let myself get taunted over here by Flammabrain when I was supposed to bring them back. I accept any punishment as well for my failure. The ice mage said furthering Natsu's horrors. Happy please tell me you're on my side, Natsu pleaded. He forced me. Happy shouted snitching him out. Natsu was about to kick Happy's ass if it wasn't for Makarov smashing him into the ground with a giant fist. Everyone sweat dropped at that. That was a little overboard. Naruto thought looking at the guild's antics. I guess it was better than what he thought was going to happen. He thought they were going to go to like mage jail or something. Makarov cleared his throat as he grabbed everyone's attention. Listen up kids, I know everyone is upset about what happened to our beloved guild. Rest assured I will get to the bottom of this. Meanwhile everyone just take a day to themselves and relax, and we will start repairing our guild in the morning. He said. Before anyone could say anything Naruto raised his hand. This got everyone to turn to him with curious glances. Yes Naruto my boy. I can handle the repair of the guild to make it quick on all of us. He said with a smile. Would you care to explain that more? How can you handle that by yourself? A mage named Leo asked. Simply by doing this. Naruto said as he crossed his fingers. Before they knew it there was another Naruto right next to him. I can make thousands of myself to overwhelm enemies or do anything I please. It's one of my signature techniques. He said a bit proudly. He further proved it as the clone went over to pick up a chair that had fallen over. And that would be quite useful. If it isn't too muck, I want you to get with Marahin, and she can show you where the tools and equipment is at for the guild. Makarov said with a grin. This boy was surprising him with something new every time he sees him. As for everyone else you're dismissed. Naruto nodded and dispelled the clone. He looked around for the barmaid until he found her talking to a big muscular guy that had white hair as well. Maybe he was her boyfriend. Naruto thought as he made his way over to them. Excuse me Mira. Master told me to come to you so you can show me where the supplies were at for the guild. Naruto asked nicely as he approached the two. Marahin smiled as she turned her attention to Naruto. Oh yeah of course. Have you met my brother Elfman? I know you didn't get to properly meet everyone since you went on that mission. She said. Naruto eyed the big guy who just looked at him. He held out his hand with a smile. Naruto Uzumaki. 
The big guy smiled back and returned the handshake. Elfman, nice to meet you. He replied. Elfman turned to Mira and smiled. I let you guys get to work. I am going to go work out sis. He said as he departed. Your brother is massive. Naruto said in awe as watching the guy leave. Yeah but he's a big softie behind the macho act. Mira replied. She then smiled and turned towards Naruto. Well let me show you where the stuff is at. She said sweetly as they left the basement. As they walked up the stairs Naruto tried not to look at her behind. He would never admit it because he didn't want to seem like a pervert like Jiraiya, but being around him for so long taught him when to admire the female body. Trying to distract himself from her beauty Naruto decided to make casual conversation. So what kind of magic do you use? He asked. I use takeover magic. Meaning I can take the souls of beasts or monsters and use their power for my own. She replied. That sounds pretty cool. I sensed a ton of magic from you, so I assumed you were quite strong. Naruto said. I am S-class mage of the guild. I haven't been active in a long time because of certain circumstances. So I am not as strong as I used to be. She replied sadly, which didn't go unnoticed by Naruto. I see, sorry didn't mean to bring up any bad memories. Naruto said solemnly. Warahin instantly reverted back to her sweet bubbly self. No worries, I know you didn't mean anything wrong. I have a question for you though. She said. Naruto raised his eyebrows as he awaited her question. Do you like it here? She asked looking at him. Like being in a new world and all. Have you enjoyed yourself here so far? She remembered that he was revived into this world with his old world memories. She had wondered the whole time was he even happy here. Naruto just looked at her for a while while he thought about her question. Back quote I never took the time to think of that. He thought. That's a really good question kiddo. I have been meaning to ask you that, but other things got in the way. Karama said speaking up. It's definitely a lot to take in for someone that has to take in a new world. Matatbi added in. It hasn't been bad so far. I mean it's only been like a week and I am just trying to find a way to fit in this world and not be so shinobi-like. He said. Well that's good to hear Naruto, however tell that to her. We can talk more later on this when you're alone. Jayuki said pushing Naruto out of his thoughts. He noticed that he must have been staring off into space. Is everything okay? You were just staring at me like I offended you? Mira asked worriedly. She had hoped she didn't bring up any pain or anything. Oh no, I had got lost in those pretty eyes of yours. Naruto replied, which caused Mira to blush lightly. She was not expecting a compliment so smoothly. She would be lying if she didn't think he was attractive. To answer your question, I don't know yet honestly. So much happened so quickly that I am still trying to grasp everything and figure out stuff. I do like you guys though. Everyone is so light-hearted and joyful, which wasn't as big of a thing in my world. It was always war and missions so there wasn't much peace sometimes. Only during the peaceful times were you able to enjoy the little things. Nordo said to the takeover mage. So what was the shinobi life was like if I may ask. Mira decided to ask next. Hearing from someone that was from a different world was fascinating to her for some reason. It's a hard life of hardships and pain. There were good times, but I had to go through a lot of pain to get to those moments. Naruto said sadly. He tried not to remember his past growing up and tried to think of the good times with all his friends. Mira seemed to notice his mood had started to sour and she didn't want that at all. Did you have a favorite food? She asked. Naruto instantly perked up and grinned ear to ear. Oh boy if I had the ingredients to make it for you I would. Ichiraku Raymon is a place to die for you know. Ugh man now I want some. Naruto said starting to drool thinking about it. Mira giggled at his antic and looked to see that it was starting to get late. I would hate to end this nice conversation but it's getting late. I am sorry that I distracted you from starting on repairing the guild. Mira apologized with a bow. Don't worry about T. I should be able to get this repaired rather quickly. I will probably start first thing in the morning. Naruto said. I see. Well I should be getting home now. I know Elfman is probably wondering where I am at. She said with a small smile. That's what a big brother is supposed to do for his sister. Naruto said with a small smile. Actually he's my younger brother. I am the oldest of three. She said with a smile. Naruto's eyes widened at her statend. So you mean to tell me he's younger than you, even though he's that freaking huge man, I would hate to be on his bad side for letting something happen to his sister. I can walk you home if you don't mind. Naruto offered. He secretly just wanted to keep talking to her. She was the first one to ask how he's been since he's gotten here. That would be lovely. Mira accepted quickly. She enjoyed their talk and wanted to talk more to the blonde. He was very interesting. As they continued walking through the streets of Magnolia they talked about all types of things. Mostly things from Naruto's world that was different in their world. He was really fascinated with what magic could do and the technology they had which he never seen. 
Before they even knew it they were at outside Marahan's apartment door. Well here we are. Mira said with a sweet smile. I guess time flew by while having good conversation. Naruto said with a chuckle as he scratched the back of his head. Thanks for walking me home Naruto. It was a great time and I wouldn't mind doing it again. Mira said with a wink. Naruto's response was a blush. All right, well I ought to get going now. I have some training I need to do you know. He said trying to change the subject. Mira giggled at that and waved him off as he walked off into the distance. You just met the girl, and you are acting like the pink-haired teammate you had when she frowned over Sasuke. Kurama said to pick on the young sage. Naruto gaped in horror at the accusation. You take that back furball. He retorted. His only answer was a laugh from all the tailed beast which further pissed him off. He decided to ignore it and pull out the scroll his dad left him. Anyway I was thinking of going over practicing my six paths techniques while I have clones learn the jutsus in this scroll. Naruto said to the beasts after they settled down from their laughter. You have all the time and Ethernano to do it. We need to see what your limit is anyway before you use our power as your next source. Kurama said getting serious again. I agree with Kurama. However though if you think you could pull it off. Summon eight clones specifically for each of us. We can explain what our powers do and what it did for your previous fellow Jinchuriki. Jayuki said. That's a great idea. Naruto said excitedly. As good as that sounds don't do it Naruto. Matatabi said butting in. Before he could respond she spoke up again. You need to do a little at a time. You aren't in no rush to learn everything as you have an entire lifetime to become what the sage was or even better. Last thing I need is for you to fry your brain because you overstuffed yourself. From what I was told you weren't the best at studying. So just take it easy lad. Son Goku added. As Matatabi and Son said just take it slow Naruto. We will always be here to guide you anyway. Jamei said adding his two cents in. Naruto gave a defeated sigh before he nodded. They were right he had the rest of his life to become the sage he was expected to be. From how everything looked so far in this world he still had time before any great threats happened anyway. You guys are right. I will take it slow if it makes you feel better. However besides Kurama I want you guys to know that training is very serious to me. When I want to accomplish it I will get it done you know. He shouted. Yeah yeah just don't raise your voice. It's annoying. Shukaku finally said after being quiet for so long shockingly. Naruto chuckled as he formed the ram sign. He summoned about 100 clones. Each to learn something new. Well here we go. Somewhere in a different guild hall. I am back master. Came the deep voice of a dark haired man. Oh welcome back Agile. I assume your mission went well. Another man said. This guy was much older. Of course. However I am disappointed with the fairy tale team I fought. They were utterly weak and useless. Gajil complained. I am sorry to hear that. What did you do them at least if I may ask? The guildmaster asked. Picked their asses and crucified them to a tree he. Gajiel said laughing. Watching that blue haired girl cry and beg was probably the best thing he's seen in that whole fight. I like it. Hopefully they will get the message that Phantom Lord will be taking back Magnolia and ridding it of them fairies. The guildmaster said as he started to laugh. Gajil smirked before he joined in and laughed as well. The next morning. Naruto was walking towards the guild hall when he noticed a giant crowd of people surrounding a tree in the park. Being curious he decided to walk over. He noticed some of his guildmates were there. People like Urza, Natsu, Lucy, Grey, Kana, Marahin and a few others were gathered too. He noticed Mira have her hand over her mouth in shock and decided to ask her what was going on. Good morning Mira Wats he stopped when he saw the three bodies on the tree. It was three people that bore the fairy tale mark and was beaten to a pulp. They each had an identical mark of something on their stomach and they were bolted to a tree. D that's Team Shadow Gear. They are a part of our guild and were found like this morning. No one knows how long they've been there. Mira said with a slight tremble in her voice. Naruto could tell she was about to cry. He patted her back comfortably while he stared at the three. He could sense that they were alive but badly injured. The biggest thing he didn't understand was that he felt anger boiling in him. He didn't personally know them yet, but they were a part of fairy tale too, and they were harmed. It was then a heavy presence that entered the area. People moved out of the way as Makarov walked up to the tree with his children on it. His was releasing a ton of killing intent as he looked at them. He gripped his staff until it smashed in his hands. Makarov then took a deep breath before he raised his voice loud enough for any of the fairy tale members to hear him. Let everyone know we are going to war. I was going to let it slide when they destroyed our guild. However they attacked my children and I will not stand for that. Phantom Lord will be more after today. What if Hagoromo gived all chakra to Naruto in fairy tale, and thanks for watching my video till the end. If you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel, and leave a like if you guys need the next part comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys, next video.